Hello, you absolute legends. How are you? Welcome back to the channel from a beautiful afternoon here in Lincolnshire. And I'm in my back garden today where we are going to be looking at this. It's a W30 Mark III Toyota MR2. Um, it is the facelift edition, i.e. it is after 2003. So it has a little few different nuances to the Mark one and it's one I picked up yesterday. Uh, I saw it for sale on Facebook. It actually belonged to a friend of mine, an acquaintance, somebody that I used to go to school with who uh, sadly passed away um, about 20 months ago due to some complications. So this car was uh, his pride and joy and I saw it on for sale and I contacted his widow who I actually know uh, as well through misspent teenage youth and friends of friends um, and it was nice to see her again but a shame in such sad circumstances anyway we fixed a deal and i uh, ended up giving this mr2 uh, a lovely new home after being sat for about 22 months since uh, his sad passing so it is a little bit of a bittersweet video but obviously she was happy that it was going to go to a good home and get a little bit of attention as well because she is aware of the youtube channel so what is it then it's a 2003 toyota mr2 mark 3 why is it so special well this is the last of the toyota mr2s they didn't make any more after this this is the last one and it's the roadster it's the spider in some places and it is the convertible version so uh, it's not got a hard top however a hard top was an optional extra the car then uh, is totally stock standard apart from the wheels uh, which have been changed to suit the previous owner's um, taste so uh, the, the gentleman who who owned it, who I bought it from, uh, the, the German he bought it from previously is the person who put those wheels on. They're not to my taste, however, they sort of go with the car, but I'm not a fan of black wheels on anything. Uh, but we'll talk about wheels later on in the video. Um, it's covered just over 41,500 miles from new, so it's quite low mileage, and it's had four owners before me with the gentleman who I bought it from buying it in 2018. Registered Oop North, uh, it's a Newcastle car, it came from, uh, I can't remember the dealer but the details are in the book, it came from a dealership uh, up near Newcastle Way. And uh, in this video then we'll have an in-depth look at the car, have a look around it, have a look at any issues, damage, uh, and talk about something that I have noticed is wrong with the car. <laughs> uh, and then we'll go from there. So at the moment, the car has no MOT. Um, it, it, was, it was brought back to me uh, by a friend of mine on a ramp, uh, on a flatbed, and uh, I obviously have only driven it on private land, and it has no tax, it's currently sawned, and uh, obviously for that reason, it's, uh, it's, it's not been anywhere. Um, it needs an MOT. I had an MOT booked in. More about MOT bookings in in another video later on on the channel. It's finished in this lovely metallic grey colour with colour coded wing mirrors and uh, black vinyl roof and black leather interior. We'll take a look then around the car. You can see that on the front bumper, there's no damage. It's not damaged in any way, shape or form. This here is actually uh, just a little bit of, I don't know what you'd call it, polish. Uh, it's been polished recently before I purchased it. Uh, it was looking beautiful. Uh, and uh, in the uh, the fog and the dew overnight, that's, uh, that's leaked down off there. Uh, so the front bumper looking good, no major issues on there. One thing I have noticed is the fog lights have sort of, I don't know, got all this stuff inside. Um, I don't know what it is, I don't know if it's some sort of corrosion or whatever, but the plan will be to take those fog lights out and sort of tip all that nonsense out of there. It's done it both sides. But no damage on the front bumper and actually no major stone chips on uh, on anything. The front lights have gone a little bit hazy at the top here. That's something I'm going to obviously address with a headlight restoration kit and some wet and dry and some uh, some polish. It's a never-ending thing, plastic headlights. Once they start to go, 
once you start polishing them, you're going to keep polishing them till the end of time. Um, they didn't really suffer with rust, these Mark III's, unlike the Mark I's and the Mark II's to some degree. So wheel arches looking nice and tidy, no major issues there. And of course we've got these Team Dynamics alloy wheels, which um, again are not to my liking. There's some damage to the tyres um, here and here, and actually someone has put metal uh, valves on here. Uh, valve covers. This one comes off nicely. I do know that the other three do not. They are stuck on. That's an issue that we're going to have to address. And um, if you remember with the uh, Audi, that one. Uh, no, not that one. The other one, the silver one. We had to um, cut those off, so that will be a job for Dad, sadly. Looking down the car, no major dinks or dents. In fact, one of the good things about the car is it hasn't got many dents in it at all. There's a couple, uh, and there's a couple in places where I'm not going to be able to get them popped out, but it's really not the end of the world, and only I will know that they're there. Looking here, then, we've got these mud flaps. Um, I would suggest they need coming off, and looking behind, because there's some dirt and debris behind there, um, that's going to be something that we will address. But the sills and the skirts and the sides are all good. There's no issues here. Uh, there's no rust or rot on any of the sills or on the bottom of any of the doors. And the car has been kept, uh, not garaged, but covered during its lifetime. Um, so the passenger door, no major issues here. We have got these aftermarket sort of rubbery bump stops. Um, there's something I'm going to remove. I understand why they're there. It's to stop this corner being damaged, but they're not to my liking. And I actually don't think they go very well on a sporty car. So they're going to come off. They'd look good on your uh, Morris Minor. Maybe not your Minor, but on something uh, a little bit more OAP, shall I say. Uh, but not on on this car. We've got this side intake. This is a plastic piece uh, that goes into the engine bay. And we've got the fuel filler cap here. Again, looking at the rear wheel arch, no issues, all good, all fine. No blisters or blebs anywhere and uh, all looking good. As you can see, that's not gonna come off there. That is corroded, that will need cutting off. And you can see that the car has been stood for quite a while just by the condition of these brake discs and these brake pads. Brake pads are fine, by the way. It's just these brake discs are quite worn uh, and uh, and dirty, I suppose, once the car gets running and going, that will semi-clean itself off. But you can see just here on the, on the wheel just how much uh, those have been sort of binding and the dust is coming off on, uh, on it being, um, I suppose, driven and moved about recently. Take a look at the back, no major issues here and because it is the MR2 it's a mid-engine so this is your engine bay. Your uh, uh, boot is technically at the front. No damage, no issues here. You've got the lovely nice and bright badges. You've got Toyota, MR2, Roadster and lots of intakes here on the back and grills as well. Has been bumped here on this corner in that um, lady who owned the car, uh, gentleman's widow, uh, bumped it slightly and it's come off a peg here. That's not a major issue if I'm honest. It's literally undo a bolt, push it back in and screw that back in. So I don't see that being a major issue at all. It's not damaged anything. There's actually no damage to this uh, this bumper it is literally just a, a knock and a pop. Um, I think here is probably where it's scuffed it the most. You can see there's a slight scuff there. Um, but again, wheel arch looking fine. No major issues, no rust. I'm going to run my finger along there. All good. And the tyre on this one looking nice as well. Automatic aerial, fully working that is. I was very surprised by that because they normally fail on these. And uh, we've got this sort of vinyl-y plastic roof with a glass heated rear screen. And on this roof, it's, I must admit, for the age of the car, it's fantastic. There's no rips, there's no tears, there's no marks. It's absolutely immaculate. So that is a big selling point for the car and a big plus. 
looking at this side, there is a slight mark on this door. It's almost as if bird lime, bird poo, has eaten into this paintwork here. Something I'm going to try and um, get out, but it's uh, eaten quite nastily into that lacquer. But that is uh, a bit of a shame about the car, but not a major issue. Again, looking at these sills here, looking good, looking good looking good all the way along there to here we've got automatic window uh, wing mirrors and automatic windows as well we'll pop the hood down in just a minute's time one thing i do love is this made in japan sticker that is uh, left on from um i suppose the manufacturing process front bumper again it looks messy but it's not it's just a case of that is where there's been some um polish and it's it's ran and it's sort of stuck between the metal and the bumpers with a bit of a wash and i have not washed this car and um, it will come out and this light is one that i've given a little bit of a polish just to see if it comes up okay with some maguire's plastics and that's probably what's in here as well we will have a look at removing the roof we'll take the roof down and then we'll have a look at the interior so the roof is a manual roof it is not a um, automatic roof, so you do have to pop it open, and you've got to mark, put these little mirrors down first, these sort of things down first. And there's a button here that you press. Ugh, this comes down, and this lever comes out. It's very much like the um, oh, what's the word I want? The MGTF and the MGF as well. So obviously much easier with two of you, but it's just me. <laughs> Inside we'll have a look, as I say, in just a minute's time. Push this button, pull that down, these pegs come out, we can pull this forward, and then in theory the roof should retract. And uh, it clips nicely into place. So the roof pushes, folds down, into place. I need to just put a little bit of WD-40 on these hinges, I think, because uh, it's just just a little bit resilient and then it snaps into place and there is your roof and you can see then with that we can pull forward again these visors and the other one pull it forward and that locks that into place and you will now see that changes the car's dynamic in that the roof is down um, I like the fact that it doesn't need a tonneau cover, that the roof retracts and sort of gives you this wonderful, I don't know what the word is, effect <laughs> on there. So I've got both the doors closed and I've actually just popped the two windows down now so you can see the uh, effect, so to speak, when you've got... Um, the roof down and the windows down and I must admit it does really add to the look of the car it looks a bit naughty doesn't it it looks a bit <laughs> it looks a bit Porsche-esque from the side is that just me what do you think or does it just look like a Toyota MR2 um, right so we've got the roof down let's take a look inside we'll start with the passenger side leather interior which was an optional extra on this you could have had fabric this comes with the monogrammed uh, leather seating no rips or tears to the leather effect seat or the leather seat which is good not much wear either doors um, quite sporty we've got this sort of plastic trim here this grab handle this sort of silver effect here it is like a plastic um, and a tweeter in the door here and a main speaker uh, and then we've obviously got your uh, pushing backwards and forwards on your lock um, we've got passenger airbag here and we've got a glove box here what's in the glove box well some stuff at the moment we've got some leather wipes we've got some locking wheel nut tools and uh, in there actually was all the documentation for the car as well. Here is the pull button 
for the front. So uh, we've pulled that and you could hopefully hear that release. That is to release the front bonnet and we'll have a look in there in just a moment. Tailored floor mats, these are the original tailored floor mats um, and the seats pull backwards and forwards the usual way. And behind those, if you pull this lever, pops forward is your first piece of storage which is in here you've got this drop down storage box what are you getting in there well not a lot is the honest answer and here's a little bit of the roof that we have folded in here is a like an acrylic um visor this folds up it's a little bit of a design failure really because if you've got tall people driving like me well you can't pop that up without having to move your seat forward. So that, in my opinion, is a design flaw. You've got this area here, this area here, uh, where you can put all your bits and pieces, a bit of luggage for the weekend, maybe. But actually, I've got the toolkit in the other side, and there's not much more room in there. We'll push the seat backwards, and it just locks into place. And as you can see, when it's back fully, you can't get that visor open, which is a big shame. That's the passenger side then, and due to the way that the sun is facing, I'll do the bits and pieces in the centre console from the other side so you don't get any shadow. Come around then to the driver's side, then we'll have a look in the front, then we'll have a look at the engine bay, then we'll start her up. Same on this side, same sort of thing. We've got monogrammed MR2 on the mats here. This is sort of in uh, a white fluff, I think, unless it's been put in. Uh, nope, that's sort of, I don't know what, uh, ironed on maybe, so you wouldn't want to give that too much of a blast. One thing I do like is these sort of stainless steel effect pedals. They're quite cool. Um, and these uh, clip in, but the clip here is broken. In fact, let's clip this one back in. It should clip back in. Come on, in you go. There we go, it clips in like that. Uh, I'll to hold that into place. And that sits under there, so I'll need to just get a new clip for here, but that's not a major issue. Lock and unlock, that stops um, you being able to unlock the fuel filler cap, which will pull, and the bonnet release, uh, the boot release, which is actually the engine bay release, whilst you are uh, have got the roof down. So you can lock that, that's with the key. And uh, same again, driver's seat. No major rips or tears. You've got a couple of bits of scuffing here on here. I've actually got some black leather dye, which I'll be treating um, that with, just to hide that little bit of scuffing there. One thing I did notice is these wires. Can you see these wires look going to the seat belt? They're quite tight. I would hate for one of them to break, but that's very tight, that is. Um, window uh, controls are here, automatic up and down. Obviously, they're not going to go at the moment because the key isn't in. Leather handbrake, up and down. Come on, there we go, up and down. And the gear knob as well. This is actually the six-speed version, which is quite rare. Um, in fact, actually, I'm going to be totally honest with you now. I didn't think it was the six-speed edition until I've just looked at this gear knob. Um, I thought this was a five-speed gearbox, which makes this car so much more rarer. <laughs> I didn't realise. That's brilliant. Uh, reverse uh, to the side, and then one, two, three, four, five, and the extra six. That is an absolute billy bonus. Didn't know about that, and that's made me quite happy. In fact, I'm going to show you my happy face. Yes, six speed. <laughs> there you go, got to see my fat face. Um, right, so in here you've got your normal controls, you've got your hazard lights at the top, you've got a digital clock, you've got your recirculation here on the right hand side. No aircon on here, which is absolutely unbelievable considering someone has specced this to the nines and not put aircon in. I suppose that was quite expensive. You've got your Toyota CD radio and you've got your uh, six disc radio as well. It's got a six disc changer in here, which is brilliant. Uh, you've also got uh, a trip navigation, computer, bits and pieces, and all sorts of stuff. And here, oh, I thought it was a push. You've got a double cup holder. Yeah, you have for all your cups. Put your double cups in there. And for some reason, you've got another cup holder here. So you can have three cups on the go. Winner, winner. In here, ashtray. It's never been smoked in the car. And let's have a look at the cigarette lighter. Oh, it's been used. It has been used at some point in its life, but um, as far as I'm aware, the car has never been smoked in, so it could have been used for, I don't know, 
lighting other things. Um, looking at this, we've got your indicators left and right. You've got your light control stalk here, and here is your um, window wipers. And actually, your clocks here are quite busy. You've got your RPM in the center. You've got your speedo off to the left, and your everything else to the right. You've got a big thing that says fuel door to the left. Not sure we needed a big thing that said fuel door. You've got your fuel gauge and you've got your temperature as well. Left and right electronic mirrors. You've got your brightness up and down. This is your fogs. You've got your locking windows to stop people from locking your windows and you can unlock and lock the car with this here. So let's put that on lock before we end up dead locking the car. Um, yeah. That's that, let's take a look at the little cubby hole behind the driver's seat. It's the same as the passenger, but it's got the original toolkit in there. And again, visor issues there. Uh, let's put the key in. You've got a bing bong to say that the key is in. Let's turn the ignition on, and I'm gonna turn the radio volume down so we don't get canceled by YouTube, but show you that I've got the automatic aerial popped up. Let's turn the blowers off, save some battery. But yeah, we've got a six disc CD player here as well, which I didn't know about until the other day. Um, I won't start it up yet. We'll start it up in just a minute's time. There is boop, the uh, automatic radio. We will look in the boot or the front first and foremost. And this is where I wonder how to do this. Here we go. Uh, this is under the frunk. MR, Midship Runabout, which is what it stands for. I will put this peg in and then we'll have a look under here. And under here, it's mainly quite plasticky. Scrivets held in place. There's one missing here, but that's not a major issue. And under here is your little cubby hole area. And actually in here, you've got a... Uh, spare wheel it's the space saver wheel it's got its original jacket on as well which will say toyota on which is nice that's all in place there's not much space in there if you uh, want anything else is there washer bottle brake fluid fuses not much under there is there i think toyota probably could have done something a little bit better with this but um I do like this midship runabout. That's a cool little thing. Cool little feature, that. Now to look at the engine bay. This is where the magic happens. Again, I'm going to have to open the lid. And on my Mark 1, because uh, it's an early import, the holder is on the left-hand side. But on this, it's on the right-hand side. So I'll uh, put the bonnet prop in and we'll have a look under here. Halford's battery that is absolutely cream crackered, it's no good. So at the moment, I'm going to have to jump start the car off to uh, start it up. We've got a little VIN plate here, information plate. Um, we've got the VVTI 16 valve engine here. And there's your dipstick. Some would argue he's behind the camera. And there's not really that much going on under here. You've got your airbox here uh, into your engine, you've got your drive belts, and your exhaust is under this cover here, this blanking plate. Has got an aftermarket exhaust, and uh, let's talk about the exhaust. It's blowing. Um, we don't know why. I don't know why. Dad's gonna have a look at it. He's gonna see what the issue is before we uh, send the car for MOT, because it won't pass an MOT currently in the uh, state that it's in with the exhaust blowing. I think that it's probably just not been fitted right. Again, aftermarket exhaust. It's not the end of the world, um, but it's something we can fix. And then you've got your coolant bottle here. Uh, last thing then, I will start the car up. You can hear it running, and that will be the end of the video. I'm gonna have to get my jump pack, as I say, because uh, the battery is totally flat. Jump pack's on, it's in place. I'm gonna just lay it down a little bit so it's not uh, rattling about when I start the engine. And I'll just start it from being in out the outside. Make sure we're out of cog, which we are. And you can hear already <laughs> just how throaty that is. Take my jump back off.
put it to the side and I'll let you listen to that engine. No idea where that blow's coming from. It is quite a bad uh, exhaust blow. But am I panicking about that? No, I've got a Toyota MR2 with 41 and a half thousand miles on the clock. What did I pay for it? Well, I'm not gonna tell you uh, out of respect. However, it was a lot less than I think you're probably expecting. Um, if you were to double the number, you would have 3,000 pounds. Let's put it that way. There it is then. Mark III Toyota MR2 W30. Purring away semi okay. <laughs> because it does need a little bit of TLC. Long term, is it going to stay in the fleet? Well, no, is the honest answer. Um, it's not something I can keep, but it is something I wanted to rescue and have a little bit of a summer blast with. Because it's the sort of thing that I've always wanted to have one. And I've always wanted to scratch that itch. So I'm going to put the proper alloy wheels on it. I do have those now. I've bought a set. More about that later. I'm going to get it nice and tidied up. Put things back that are missing, such as that scrivet and the back bumper that's hanging off a little bit. Get it MOT'd. Maybe enjoy it for a couple of months and offer it to a loving new home. But I think it's an absolute credit and an absolute beauty. And I am proud to say that at the moment, it's mine. Have a great day, whatever you're getting up to. If you've enjoyed the video, let me know. It's a long one, I can only apologise because there was a lot I wanted to cover. Maybe in one of the videos, I'll be taking it for an MOT and uh, getting it tested and getting the uh, exhaust back on properly. Have a great day, whatever you're getting up to. You are all absolute legends. Thanks to everyone who's followed the channel so far. Take care. Goodbye. Hello, you absolute legends. Welcome back to the channel. It's John here on a beautiful day in Lincolnshire. It's going to be an absolute scorcher today, I think. Dad's here, and we are with the Toyota MR2. It's the one I've just bought. I brought it round, and you saw earlier in the video, I brought it round... Um, and it sounds like a bit of a tractor. There's a few issues with the exhaust system and also it hasn't got an MOT so Dad and I are going to give it a bit of a once over before the MOT. In this video then, part one of uh, working on the car. We're going to have a full day at it. We'll see how much we can get done in today's video ready for the MOT. Fingers crossed we don't discover too many issues and uh, see what we can get done today on the car. So I'm round at Dad's. Dad's here, showing off his rippled physique after spending months in the gym. Not bad for nearly 70. He's getting in it. Hang on a minute, you're getting in my car? Hang on, hang on a minute, it's not for old blokes. <laughs> it is, mate. What do you reckon to that? I like it, mate, yeah. Well, can you fix all the problems on it now, please? I like it, mate. No, I'm going to take your mum to the seaside in it. Oh, she won't get in that. That's true, we'd have a booster seat. For <laughs> <laughs> it's a seaside. Will it start? Oh, there you are. I've got one of them burr exhausts. I could fly past my house late at night making the noise. <laughs> Can we make it so it goes bang, 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 bang as well? <laughs> On the overrun. There you go. What do you reckon? Comfy. It's all right, isn't it? Yeah. It's yours for £3,000. Can we pay on instalments? <laughs> I think I owe you more than three grand. <laughs> That's the button we should have been pressing. Look. Oh, uh, what's that? No, but if it's deadlocked, it still wouldn't. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about that in another video. Let's deadlock it. Oh, there we go. Does it deadlock? Yeah. There we go. So, full disclosure, yeah. I lost the key. Uh, so, we've had a bit of a panic today. I've lost the key. I lost it at seven o'clock this morning. Uh, I found the key at five o'clock. Well, actually, no, that's a dirty lie. This man found the key. Uh, it was under my refrigerator. We'll talk about that in another video. But yeah, the exhaust is blowing. Uh, it does sound like a bit of a tractor when you take it down the road. And uh, because it's been stood for such a long time, the discs are a little bit bindy. Uh, but they will wear off with time. 
Why are you taking it? I just you can just hear them. You can just hear the the binding because no, they're not binding bad at all. You can just hear them when we're coming down the road. Yeah. Well, it needs a little bit of TLC. Is that something you can do? No, I don't bet these. <laughs> Smart cars. Smart cars, yeah. So this is the first look. What what are you giving me advice? A little reverse reserve travel. Oh, don't like that. So the car's got no MOT. Uh, it's when I bought it, it's got a ticket. Uh, but yeah. Well, let's get your first opinion then. I want it. Well, you can have it. I want it. You got to fix it. I want it. I want it. I want it. If you want it, you can have it, mate. Well, you'd look worse in a Porsche 944. Yeah, yeah Porsche boxed. Oh, well. What are you doing? What's going on in the smart car workshop? DIY, mate. What's this? This is... Someone's fixing a BMW in here. Anyway, so that's Dad's first impression. He's going to keep us updated with what's going on with the exhaust and the car uh, later on in the video. Hang on a minute. It's all going on here now. Some bad times. <laughs> My mum's in the car now. What do you reckon to that? It's too low. Too low for you. You can't see you and Dad heading off down to Hun Stanton in that. No, I fell in. It's like laying in bed. Oh, you'll be falling asleep. There you go. That's it. I've lost the car. Mum and Dad have commandeered it. You've got the key. Yeah, we've we've had a problem with that today. I'm going under the lorries. There you go. No, too low, Mum's first too appearance. Oh yeah, we well, don't want to look in there. Mother, I need you to do me a favour then. What's that? I need you to open the glove box. Can you reach? And in, at the top uh, right is a little flat knob that's got a picture of a car on it. Above you, above pull you. That that's it. Pull that. There you go. You'll be thrilled with the amount of space under here. Is that the boot? This is the boot. Can you get it? Show it. Look like being beaten by it. Ah, right. So then we look in there, do we? So put your put your peg up. Oh, I see. You've got a prop. This is your boot space. Whoa! That boot was put a wheel in there. You're not getting much in there. It's not, is it? It's, wor it's worse than a blooming Mark One, isn't it? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, there's not much space in it at all. Good lord. But but behind the seats. Uh, oh, our cubby holes. Again, you can get a toolkit in there. That's worse than a Mark 1. Yeah. What's all in here then? Well, that's what I want to know, what's all under there, because I think Toyota's missed a trick here. Because there's a lot of dead space, I think, here. There will be, be tons of Day two of uh, Toyota MR2 Fettling. This is actually Dad's first look at it uh, properly, prior to an MOT. So he's going to jack it up. We're going to look at that exhaust. We're going to look at a few other issues uh, and see just how bad it is. But we've just started it up. It does sound like a tractor. Um, there's definitely a leak in that exhaust somewhere. Quite a big one. Hopefully it's just not fitted properly. Um, as opposed to there being a massive hole in it. So we shall soon find out. So, so the first port of call is jack her up. Uh, the issue you've got is, because a lot of it's plastic under tray, <laughs> where do you jack it up? So we've uh, used the four post lift section on the sill, which I don't really like to use. We've spread that out with a bit of wood, uh, just so we're not uh, going to crunch that sill. That's getting the axle stands under, and then we'll have a look at uh, what's going on. Right, so I'm under the car. There's not much space. I can see under the car, it's uh, all plastic trays, as we can see. So the first port of call is to get this tray off, I must admit. It should come off, and I can see the issue with the exhaust straight away. It's blowing rotten. I would expect that's probably what's causing the blowing. We shall have a look in a minute. There's a little bit of rust on this arm as well. It's quite rusty under here, to be honest with you. But I think I'm panicking about. More plastic trim now coming off. Dad's diagnosing the problem. 
We've not found the hole yet. I thought I'd found the hole. I haven't. I've just found some rust. Dad's on the case. Well, in the most unflattering video I think I've ever taken, I am underneath <laughs> the MR2. Let's have a look what we can find. So I've now taken off uh, all the under trays, which are here, and we can actually see underneath the car now. So what have we got? We've got the sump plug and the sump. Looking good, to be honest with you. No major issues under there. There's a little bit of this, I don't know what you'd call it. Just dirt, I suppose, maybe, and this ferrous oxide stuff on the engine block. Oil filter, there's a little bit of a little bit of an oil leak from the filter, but no major issues. And actually, under here, the chassis is nice and solid. There's no major issues under there. There's a little bit of rust here. Uh, that you can see, but there's no big holes. It's nice and solid. This bracket's rusty, but that's fine. Uh, it's looking all good. It's looking all good. Axles are looking good. Brakes are looking fine. They need to clean off. Drive shaft's looking good. I think this is going to be the issue. I think there's a hole somewhere between the cat and this flexi. I think that's what's going to be blowing. So we'll uh, have a look at this. I think this has got to come out. This heat shield will come off, we'll have a look at that, clean that all up. Uh, but engine mount's looking good. Up into the bay here, looking fine. That's all the relays and bits and pieces. They really are a peg to work on though. <laughs> when you're laid on your back and you're 20 stone and you're 6 foot 4. But considering the age of the car... I would suggest that's not too bad under here. We've broke a couple of scrivets getting that plastic under the tray off. There's Dad. Look, hello. I thought he was putting the. I thought he was putting the kettle on. I put the kettle on again. Doing some other work. <laughs> right. So far, so good. I've brewed up the tea. Dad is uh, not weird. He's limited edition, and I'm apparently a world class husband. I think Mrs. John Cooper would probably argue with that that I'm a probably terrible. Stress-inducing husband. Uh, Dad's here. He's taking off. What are you taking off? Taking the uh, cats off. Uh, taking the cats off. We've had to resort to this inferior product because we've run out of. I know we've run out of Bulldog BDX, so we're having to resort to the WD40, which. Somebody keeps all the bulldog Dad's saying somebody keeps all the bulldog for himself. Now, oh, well, you, you need to get onto the bulldog team. Uh, so cats coming off. Exhaust is coming off. Uh, I think we're probably just going to see where there's a hole and probably refit it properly because I th I think uh, there's a big problem somewhere. <laughs> Blooming well is. Uh, let's have a look from the top, see what we can see. What can we see? Anything? Uh, no, not really. But we'll have diagnosed the problem in about 10 minutes. Uh, next port call is to get the wheels off. Dan's still working on the... Uh, getting the exhaust. Well, I say working. He's having a well-deserved cup of tea break. Uh, so I'm going to take the wheels off. They need looking at anyway. So that is a job job, and it's going to give us some more access to where we need to be. One wheel off. Uh, these are the wheel nuts. They're a little bit corroded, especially this locking wheel nut. Uh, top coupling tip. Put your wheel nuts back on the studs uh, so you don't lose them while you're not using Oh, why well, you haven't got your wheel on the car. Where's my wheel nuts? Oh, there they are. They're on the studs. Uh, it gives me a chance to look at the brake discs. They're not too bad. They're, they're rusty. They could do with a, a wire brush off. But actually, they're not pitted. They're not scored. They're not too bad, actually. And the brake pads... Well, the brake pads are all right as well. Just needs a good old wire brush off. These calipers are looking good. They've been either painted at some point or uh, haven't had much wear. Um, obviously this needs wire brushing off, but this side, not looking too bad. So wheels themselves are in really good condition. They're dirty because obviously the brakes have been binding a little bit, but they're in really good condition. There's no chips or knocks or curbing on the back wheels at least. 
Um, one thing we have got to tackle are these, <laughs> which uh, are the bane of mine and Dad's life. If you haven't seen the video of Dad removing these, and um, we've got a little uh, way of dealing with them, um, which is basically cutting them off. But uh, these have welded themselves to the uh, the thread on the valve. Um, but yeah, wheels are off. And whilst the mudguard's off, I'm going to give it a scrub. Dad's removing oxygen sensors. Right, so we've got the catalytic converter off. I say we, Dad has got the catalytic converter off. And we found out where it's blowing from. It's blowing from, well you pointed out, but I can't say. Somewhere just there. And um, yeah, you can see the mucky mark, look, where it's coming out of. That's where it's going to be blowing, that flexi part. Hmm. Repairable? <laughs> yeah. Maybe it might need a new part. Might need some new flexi welding in. We we'll shall soon find out. But that is the issue. That's why it was blowing. Let's take a look. And we can see under here now, this is the, the back box. And it's come off of there. And it's on some pegs. And it's a bit, bit of a nuisance to fit, to be honest with you. Uh, I'm not sure if this is stainless steel or not. Doesn't look it, does it? Um, but that's going to be something we need to repair. Oh, he's got his workmate out already. Hang on, there's a gasket here. <sighs> See, that's all. Yeah, but it won't blow in from. Damaged. Them. I expected it was blowing from them, but it's not. But it's not. Right, fine. So that's off. That's going to be the issue. Can you play this instrument? <laughs> what you got there? White raspberries? No, yellow. Yellow raspberries. Let's try one then. Have you, have you tried one yet? Yeah, check it inside. Oh yeah, make sure there's no maggots. Anything in there? <laughs> yellow raspberry. Don't taste the yellow. What have we got? We've got another raspberry here, look. Red raspberry, proper raspberry. No to yellow raspberries. <laughs> right, so Dad's going to have a dig at this to see where the issue is. Uh, behind this flexi. Oh, right. Oh, that's a good idea, yes. Yeah, stick a light down it in the dark and see if we can see it. Good idea, let's go do that. I'm coming, I'm following. MR2 yoga. Look how low that is. Shall I shut this door? Maybe. Let's shut the door, let's shut the door. Goodbye. Can you see anything? Ah, oh, yeah, I can. Mm -hmm. Just there. Oh. At the bottom there. Uh, hold on. Oh, uh, there. there it is. There's daylight shining through just here somewhere. There's the leak. It's coming through here. Right at the bottom. Right at the bottom there, look. There's quite a big crack in it, actually. We can, we can sort that out. Well, I say we. Good. Let me let me hold it on the top, and you can see. You'll be able to see where it is. It's better like this, actually, dude. Is it? Yeah. But you can see the issue. It's as I say, it's right down here. It's... Right down there. There it is. Look, right there. I can't give me flipping head in to see. Well, we found the source then, using Dad's great idea of taking a, a light into the garage. It's in here, the weld has failed. So we've got to dig all this wire mesh away on the flexi and weld that up. Now, what's the purpose of that mesh, that wire mesh? No idea, mate, it must strengthen it, wouldn't it? Protect it. But it's not actually flexible here, is it? So there is a like a metal piece behind here. There's a convoluted Like a metal piece. collet. 
But it's not just this wire, is it? This is slightly flexible. Yeah. It? But that wire is not structural. No. Not the end of the world for us to cut a bit off, anyway. That might have, hopefully, found the issue. So here's the theory, because this was quite a pain to take off, because this, when it sits on the uh, pegs, is a bit of a nuisance. Dad's theory is that somebody, at some point in the past, has tried to service the car, because this is welded to the here. But this is just crimped in, this part here. And we think that somebody has tried to get it off and it's been a bit ram ass, as we'd say in Lincolnshire, and has pulled it off because this has caused a gap between this crimping. Plan is we're going to disc all this off all around here and uh, weld it. It's not the ideal situation. The ideal situation is put we'd put a new one on, but for the sake of, you know, 150, 200 quid, uh -huh. well, let's try and, Cheap as that, try eh? and fix it. Well... I've looked, and an aftermarket one is about 150, 200 quid. Um, that was a Toyota one. Well, a Toyota one you can't get. Oh, right. um, and if you can get, they're a lot of dollar. Um, so I'm going to disc this off. Hope that there's no other... You don't think there's any other issues under all this heat shield? Uh, hopefully not. Hopefully not. It's that bad, making that much noise, that's the only one I could find. Uh, so we're going to disc this off, weld it up, and hopefully that will uh, solve the problem. Don't get me wrong, this isn't the best way to fix this, but as a temporary fix and as a, I don't know, shot in the dark, we shall see how we go. Dad's trying to get himself a sponsorship with this video. What, what do you like? Urbauer angle grinder. Oh right, you want an Urbauer angle grinder. <laughs> We've had Vaquita tools, Urbauer angle grinders. Mrs John Coopman said, I like little apple turnovers, and she's still not got a sponsorship, so I think you might be lucky to get yourself a Fibok t-shirt. Urbauer. In fact, to quite, I am actually wearing my Fibok t-shirt today, and it's uh, doing all right in the heat. Um, good. You're not going to get an Urbauer sponsorship. Urbauer. <laughs> Well, the angle grinding has revealed some more drama. There's a great big crack in it. <laughs> so uh, that might be causing an issue as well. All this to here. It's where, as I say, I think someone's been a little bit rough with it. We're going to weld this up. We're going to weld this up. This flexi stuff isn't important, but um, it's, been, uh, it's been angle grinded off now. Hopefully... That is what's causing the exhaust to blow. Um, and there's nothing else further down or further in the car. I say hopefully. I think it is. Especially that crack. Not good. There's a crack here. There's a gap there. There's another crack round there. So it's got a few issues. But don't worry, because Dad's here with his welder. Hopefully that will solve the issue. Will there be more under here? Maybe. We shall soon find out. Welding time. Flashing light warning if you're light sensitive. Uh, skip the next 20 seconds. This might not work, because the metal is very thin. I don't think we're going to win any prizes for it being pretty, <laughs> but it might just be functional. Fingers crossed. There's fingers crossed that that temporarily, if anything, solves the problem.
Whilst Dad's uh, welding, I've come to be the honorary tea boy. You might think, hang on a minute, John, what's going on in here? Uh, you've got your little tea station set up. Well, yeah, because this is the current state of the kitchen. Awaiting a new kitchen. Uh, we've got the floor screeded this morning, so it's self-leveling. It, it's nearly dry, actually, to be fair, but uh, that's why the, uh, the tea making station has been moved. You can have ground ginger if you want, or not. Well, Dad's quite embarrassed with the state of this. It's not welded amazingly well, to be honest with you, but it might do the job. Not pretty. Not pretty, but, <laughs> but nobody's going to look at that, hopefully. Um, it might do the job. At least we'll soon find out when we put a light back down it. That should stop the car temporarily from sounding like a tractor. Moment of truth. Let's go back into the darkness. Get the light and shine it on. See if uh, it solved the problem. Still a bit more to do. There's still a gap here. Let's have a look. There it is. Only little though, but there's still a gap, so more welding required. No, 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 Whilst Dad's continuing to weld that, I'm going to tackle this issue here, which is basically uh, the bumper is hanging off. Uh, it's been bumped ever so slightly, and the issue is this peg here on the bumper has been damaged, and it's not sitting right. My plan is to undo this screw, put it back into place, and screw it back up again. It should be an easy two-minute fix. So it's not perfect, because it's actually broken the bracket on the bumper plastic bracket there but I've lined it up and put it back into place with that washer and actually it's now looking much better than it was so that bumper it's no longer hanging off easy two minute fix and a big improvement to the car one of the benefits of uh, working at mum and dad's is head chef here lot has done us some dinner what you got there drink. some, some drinks as well we know what we got here. Look, we got some chicken and some flatbread and some ham and don't know what that green stuff is, but uh, yeah, being looked after. Right, welding complete, and uh, it's not pretty, but we've uh, got it to a point where there's no holes in that cat now. Um, I'm going to make no bones about it. That's a bodge, by the way. Ideally, it needs a brand new catalytic converter. Um, how much is one of them? Well, it's between 150 and 200 quid. Why have I bodged that? Well, <laughs> because there might be some other issues that we might find yet, and I need to spend some cash on. But, although not pretty, if it does the job and diagnoses that there's no other leaks in the exhaust system, or rattles, or anything like that, then as a bodge, I'm okay with that. I know Dad's not happy with it. He uh, will not sign that job off. Um, but as a temporary fix, to make sure everything's okay, to cover them gaps and them holes, jobs are good. Um, there might, again, still be further issues that we need to address. There might be some more holes underneath these heat shields. I don't suppose we'll know until it's back on the car. So, for full disclosure, that is a massive bodge. Dad, again, is happy that uh, it's to solve an issue, but ideally we'll eventually have a new catalytic converter put on. There's some horrible door protector things on this door, which I've ripped off now. Uh, rip that off, rip that off. Nonsense, rubbish, hate it. Got all this sticky stuff and stuff to remove. Hopefully it's not rotten behind there. White spirit, rag, elbow grease, fingers crossed. White Spirit, WD-40, T-cut, job done. And there's really only one suitable place for these. Goodbye. Looking good. Looking good. Dad's under the car here. He's refitting the catalytic converter now. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so that's one job being done. 
catalytic converter being put back on. Fingers crossed, solved the uh, blowing. Well, that's it then. So under trays are back on. Catalytic converter is back on. I suppose the next thing to do is turn it on and test it. Make sure it's uh, it's not uh, not still blowing. We'll uh, fire her up. So sounding much better already, much quieter. Much better. Doesn't sound like a tractor. And actually... No blows. No exhaust blowing. Which is good news. Not today. <laughs> today. Again, temporary fix. Um, but it's solved the problem and hopefully that's now. <laughs> An MOT pass. That VVTI uh, revving nicely. Doesn't sound like a tractor, which I'm impressed about. It's not going to go pop, 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 pop. Flames. What's he like? Right, anyway, right, next job. Uh, brakes. Is to look at these brakes. Clean them up, free them off. But uh, from an MOT point of view now, Dad's going to give it a once over. But I think we're okay now. Right, time to tackle this uh, brake, as in just to check the brakes. Maybe give them an overhaul, make sure they're not seized. I've taken the bottom bolt out of the caliper. See if we can tilt the caliper up. Right, so uh, disc is free, but it won't come out. Um, this pad has come off, but there is a pad stuck. Uh, which yeah. it's a good job we're doing this. It's absolutely stuck solid onto the... Uh, In the caliper carrier. Yeah, carrier. into the carrier. So that's out now. Hooray! So that'll need easing off. It's got the self-adjusting, auto-adjusting calipers. Shims have all fallen off as well, but... This is a nightmare to get off. No, it's not a nightmare. It's uh, a it's bit of a awkward. nuisance. It's awkward. <laughs> awkward. It's not a nightmare. Calipers off. Uh, now I need to take the pad carrier off. This has been held in place. I've just attached this with some wire to the uh, spring. And that is keeping that nice and out the way. Pad carriers off, discs coming off. There we go, now we can see. Clean that off, clean that off, ease everything off. Wire brush time. On what is probably the hottest day of the year so far, I'm sweating like a 2001 Transit on an MOT ramp. <laughs> this was a bad idea. Disc. Gonna rub up and down on this concoction. Rub it up and down on that sandpaper, that'll do that job. And wire brush everything else. Now to clean the pad carrier, I've taken these out and I'm just filing and cleaning down in here. So that's all the carrier bits clean, these little shims clean and uh, installed back with brake spray just to keep them in place. And uh, nice and tidy. So that is ready to now go back on the car. So the pads are okay, they just need a good clean off. And while we're here, uh, we have drained, we are draining the brake fluid reservoir. We're gonna change the brake fluid. We've got no idea when the brake fluid was last changed. I think it was 2020. So we're gonna just put some brake fluid in just to be on the safe side. Right, time to reassemble the brakes. That's it, brakes are back together. Just gotta bleed them now. Well, <laughs> I'm a bit filthy now. We've got two uh well, we've got both the rear brakes sorted out uh and the wheel on this one i've taken that horrible locking wheel nut off and now that runs lovely and uh we've even managed to remove those horrible caps that were stuck on got a new method of those heat gun and impact driver uh this one i'm still working on but uh we're getting there batteries on charge with probably the world's oldest battery charger. Uh, in fact, well, it is charging, I can hear it, but it's not not showing anything on there, so that's bad news. We shall see. Quick job we've just done. The fuel filler cap did not open, um, which probably explains why the car is nearly out of petrol. Um, so Dad pulled the lever. I managed to pry the uh, flap open, and actually it was bent, so the release wasn't releasing um, in the gap. 
So we've bent the fuel filler cap a little bit up, perhaps, I don't know, 10 degrees, maybe like that. Um, and now it works. Everything's back together. Made sure that we have copper slipped um, everything that needed to be. Don't put it on the brake discs <laughs> and on the pads, um, but on all the shims, bolts, nuts, caliper workings. All good. Next thing um, is to put the wheel back on, drop it on the deck, and uh, torque the wheels. Cars on the deck. Um, pretty much it for the day. We've been working all day. It's still beautiful. It's absolutely scorching. Uh, last thing is to torque the wheel nuts um, and then get it all tidied up. We've got the smart charger on the battery now, 13.4. See if we can recover that battery, but I'm not hopeful, to be honest with you. Um, and that will be it for day one of pre-MOT work on the... Uh, MR2. So I've still got to tackle the uh, front brakes, but can you see this horrible, rusty old locking wheel nut tool? Well, I've taken the rear two off because who's going to steal the, the alloys nowadays? It's not really a thing, is it? Um, and the car's not going to be left somewhere where the alloy wheels can be stolen. So I'm going to take those off and put just normal wheel nuts on and we have been removing the worst things in the world those metal accessories in fact we've got a new way of doing it and i'll show you fingers crossed it. <laughs> this works it's worked on all the other three uh, the way we're doing it is hang on a minute i'm explaining <laughs> we're heating up the um, cap with the heat gun putting a set of pliers on it and then with a 10 mil socket on an impact wrench it's pretty much the doing the job. Dad is hankering after a sponsorship deal. So if anyone's watching and wants to sponsor Dad I like the pizza. with tools, food, T-shirts, because clearly you can't afford one, um, then get in contact, because Dad is hankering after a sponsorship deal. Right, where's the pliers? Uh, they'll be on the bench, I think. Oh, he's put them away. Goodness me. Fingers crossed this works. Um... If you've not watched the video on the channel from the Audi TT that we bought for Mrs. John Coopland, we had to cut these off and they were a nightmare. As I say, fingers crossed, our new way of doing it is going to work for you on video. 10 mil socket, pair of pliers, and it brings it straight off. Just did that one. But we've broken the uh, rubber. The rubber. I'm not going to panic about that. We haven't broken the valve. We've just damaged the rubber, rubber on the valve. But you're never going to see it. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and we're going to not worry about that. So that's a, a, a try it first before you get your Dremel out situation with regards to removing these uh, the wheels. Oh, it's hot. Oh, that is hot. <laughs> That was hot, uh, but I'm going to put the others where they belong. So these are the ones, these metal, horrible wheel caps. You don't want these for any reason, do you? Yes, I'm going to put them on my uh, listen note. Yes, I'm going to put them where they belong, and you can guess where they're going. Goodbye. <laughs> horrible old... Locking wheel nuts gone. Uh, that's the new one, clearly. I've not cleaned any of this yet, but uh, I've, I must admit I've kept the old blocking wheel nuts just in case. But uh, yeah, that's that done. Right, it's going to be tidy up then, and uh, that'll be it for this day and this video. We've achieved a lot, haven't we? We've fixed the cat, we've fixed the exhaust blowing. We've done all the back brakes, we've bled the brake system, I've taken those horrible door bumper things off and just had a genuine tidy up of the car. Things left to do before MOT, we've got to check the lights, we've got to check the tyre pressures, um, we're going to clean all the interior, make sure that the battery's okay, fill it full of fuel. Um, but at the moment we've not found anything, in my opinion, 
too nasty. Who knows what the front brakes will show us, but um, I'm quietly confident everything should be okay. It's been a long one, but if you've enjoyed the video, let me know in the comments below. Thumbs up if you haven't already done so. Thumbs up. And uh, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do, because it really does help. And you will get notified of any new content that we upload. Stuff come in every Wednesday, every Saturday, shorts in between. Have a great day, whatever you're getting up to. Take care from a beautiful scorching day in Lincoln. The most hot day in Lincolnshire. And you can see I am... You know, I'm filthy. <laughs> Take care. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Morning, you absolute legends. Welcome back to the channel. We're here with the MR2, and it's day two of getting it ready for MOT, which is uh, tomorrow. Um, first job of the day. I've got my petrol cans because the car is not insured at the moment and um, has got no petrol in it. So I need to nip on down to my local fuel station, fill me jerry cans just to fill it full of petrol. Uh, so what we got, we got 10 litres here. I don't see that that's going to be an issue. Bonus 406 content. Um, so we're gonna head on down to the petrol station, get these full and then tip them in the car. Job one of the day. Right, got my petrol. Also one pound 54.9 pence per litre, 11 litres, 18 pounds robbing bastards uh, also got myself a gatsby small white loaf reduced by 45 pence to a 60p because these white farmhouse loaves you know the ones i'm talking about the really squishy ones um are absolutely fantastic with a big load of uh, butter on doorstop and butter mm, that is my guilty pleasure so 18 pounds 74 later i've got my petrol one thing that did interest me was a sign I saw when I was at the petrol station, which was about filling portable containers. It said you can fill up a maximum of 10 litres in portable containers. So that's two five litres. Well, I've just filled up 11.71 litres. So come and arrest me, co-op. Um, but why is that? Why can't I fill up multiple containers? If I had the big jerry cans, I'd be filling up 20, 30, 40 litres. Why are you limiting your uh, container purchases, cop? I want to know. Uh, before we fill the car up, look at Mum's pumpkins that she's grown. If you remember in an earlier video, um, when we did the garden work, there was some little seeds, some little blue and red seeds. Mum has grown them, as we said, and they've turned into pumpkins. So let's have a look at Mum's pumpkin. There we go, look. Big, medium and baby pumpkin, all grown from them seeds. That saved us, what? Two pounds, one pound and 50p from Asda this year from buying pumpkins, so I'm sure I'll have that one. Mrs. John Coopman can have that one, and Pat the Panda's got that one. Good job. Right, it's time to put the petrol in the car. Dad has explained to me that the reason that you... What is that? <coughs> is that a vuvuzela? Uh, Dad's explained to me that the reason you can't fill up more than two tins is because that's the law, apparently, and has always been the law. So, uh, I don't know what this Wally's doing. So, um, I've been breaking the law, I suppose, when I've been filling four or five cans up. But now I know, and now I am going to be compliant. Unleaded fuel only. Yeah, I've got my fuel. Dad's uh, pulling out his special fuel filling funnel. We're going to put the uh, put the petrol in. Dad's keen to show off the fact that it's branded shell. Where have you nabbed that from? <laughs> I'm sure that's been found. I only use shell. Oh, you, oh, you're tr trying for a, uh, another sponsorship. Uh, brilliant. Give me that flipping funnel. Oh, he's got to clean it out. Fair enough. It's all going on this morning. Mum's here. Thank you. Cheers. Right. We need a funnel holding person. A funnel holding person is required, apparently. You can be the funnel holding person, and I'll be the... Any splits in there? Uh, no, we're all good. Hang on a minute, is that in? Ah, yeah, winner, winner. Right, let's pour the petrol in. Well, that's one job job then. So, uh, petrol is in the car. Let's go and uh, just see how much of a difference to the needle that has actually made. I probably expect the answer's nothing, but we'll soon find out. Ah, right, where's the keys? Don't lose them like I have a habit of doing on this car. Uh, the battery, by the way, on the last video was on charge. The battery is absolutely knackered. Um, 
as you can hear. Uh, the car won't start. So let's have a look. Uh, what's that? That's given us nearly, th- oh, I don't know, a quarter and a half. So nearly half a tank. Not too bad. Not too bad going for 20 quid. <laughs> I remember when I could fill both my tanks up and it would cost me £10. I remember when I could fill my moped up and it was £4. Those were good days. <laughs> what was that? I used to put 50 pence worth in my fizzy. There you go, that was back in 1842. Um, right, next job uh, is probably going to be uh, checking out the lights, checking out everything, and uh, having a quick look at these front brakes. Also, I've been told I need to give you a kitchen update <laughs> for those that are bothered. Uh, floor has been sanded, uh, all the lumps and bumps are coming out of the floor, we've got the bits and pieces in here just so mum and dad can live. Um, but new light, look at this new fantastic light, I'm a big fan of this. Nice panel light, all the electrics are in, done. Uh, skirting board is starting to go in, and all the walls are painted. So uh, I think the next job is going to be flooring and, well, kitchen. I've stopped to have some bread loaf. <laughs> the bread loaf inspectors are here. What's that all about, licking your lips, missus? Um, so yeah, I'm gonna have this as my unhealthy breakfast. This, loads of butter. Look at the slab on that, beautiful, wonderful. Um, so that, and then we'll tackle the car. Back at Dad's then, I've had my breakfast. I have uh, kept the inspectors happy. Dad is here, he's about to jack up the front. We're gonna get the front wheels off, look at the front brakes. And if you remember in the last video, I found this in the glove box and I had absolutely no idea what it was, Origin B2. And I knew that it plugged into something uh, because it's got this sort of old Sony Ericsson style plug. Well, I can tell you it is a old format laser speed camera detector. Not sure if they're outlawed now or if they're banned, uh, but uh, it's, I've only just got this unit. I've not got any other part of it. Um, I've had a quick Google. They were like 400 quid new. Probably totally obsolete now with the invention of Google Maps and Waze. But uh, yeah, that's answered the question. And for anyone else wondering, it's a speed camera detector. Uh, would you believe it? The car was actually far too low for Dad to get his jack under. So we've had to put a little bit of a ramp here and a bit of wood and wheel the car backwards onto that just to take it up a little bit, you know, two inches, so we can get our uh, jack under there. Got this wheel off, uh, looks fine. It's rotten and rusty, as I hear, because it's not been anywhere. And as Dad has quite rightly just said, the whole car just looks like it hasn't really been anywhere for a little while, and that is because it hasn't. It's been laid up for 22 months, um, being unused. So get the other side off, have a look at that as well. <laughs> But this is looking okay. Might just need a little bit of an ease off, uh, a bit of a wire brush. But um, no major issues, no panic yet. Dad's in the process of checking the uh, joints and the bushes, making sure there's no excess play or wear in them. Not looking so. <laughs> looking okay. Uh, I've got a caliper off and hung up. I've got one of the pads off. These are free actually, so there's no major issue with the pads. I'm gonna get the pad carrier off, get the disc off, and give that a clean. So whilst I'm wire brushing uh, the hub and just the pad holder area and just this bit off, uh, I'm gonna clean off the disc. Dad is cleaning off the uh, carrier pad carrier he's cheating he's using a uh, wire brush on an angle grinder but it's a beautiful day to do this I'm in no rush I'm enjoying it so far so good uh, I got bored of trying to clean these with sandpaper and a uh, wire brush so I worked smarter and not harder uh, and that's cleaning these up nicely they're not in bad nick they're not scored or anything like that they're just are a bit rusty Right, it's all cleaned off. I've put this wheel nut back on just to hold the disc in place and I'm in the process of putting the pad carrier back on. Make sure when you're putting it all back together, copper slip grease on all your nuts. 
uh, on your pad shims on your carrier everywhere apart from remember anything that touches the brakes you don't want copper slip <laughs> on anything that involves braking uh, i've also got my kit out to um, bleed the brakes because that will be something we need to do i need to wind that caliper back a little bit and get it all put back together so that's all done, that's all nice and clean and tidy. We've bred the blake brakes, bled, bl bleh, try saying that. Bre bled the brakes. Yeah. Uh, right, it's so time to put the wheel back on and then test the ball joints and everything like that. Make sure there's no no play in them. Wheel nuts are rusty. Dad's found a, uh, is that an MOT fail, is it? Yeah. Wheel nuts rusty. It does look a mess, doesn't it? Well give that a good old clean up those wheel nuts. Uh, is it actually a MOT fail? I was going to say, what are we on about? Um, we have found an issue in that there's a split in a gator here. Uh, up here, suspension gator, and it's just split. Um, it's an advisory at best. So that's one issue. But we'll go to the other side and we'll get that sorted now. That wheel's back on, but first, important things. Aha, it's dinner time again. What have we got here today? Mums. You can't have one of them chairs. You wouldn't have a room. No, I can't have one of these. I better have this one. What have we got? We've got ham. Flatbread, eggs, mushrooms, uh, another salad. Is mum trying to tell me something? And you're going to eat a tin of Asda sardines in tomato sauce. For the benefit of uh, commercialisation, maybe you could get a sponsor with Asda sardines. I love Asda sardines. <laughs> Thank you, brother. About to uh, talk the wheel nuts back up. Dad has checked the trap rod ends, the ball joints, the suspension mounts, the suspension, the springs, uh, CV boots, no issues there at all. Uh, not the CV boot, beg your pardon, the rack boot. Yes, that's my uh, my fault. So we're uh, looking good so far. We've just got to get a um, dust cap on all of these, but I'll buy some of them from somewhere. Next side. So we're pumping up the tyre pressures, 26 psi on the front, 36 on the back and we've just done the spare wheel as well which for whatever reason has clearly not been pumped up for a very long time. Uh, it needs to be 60 psi and it was only at 15 so that's a job job. <laughs> Good job I didn't need my spare wheel uh, on the way here I suppose. As you can see now there's not that much space in the front. <laughs> Certainly not much in there. Um, is there a fixing for that? No. Ah, should there should be, yeah. I wonder if it's in my toolbox. I'll get my toolbox out. One second. Currently working then on the near side. I've got the wheel off. I've got the pad carrier and pads off. Got the disc off. It's not bad under here, to be honest with you. There's not much rust, rot. That's all the original paint on there. So it's not, not had a hard life. Um... And this disc is okay, it just needs some TLC. Look at that. Look. Just needs a clean up. Let's get this on it. Gonna clean it with that. It's coming up a treat. Same again, this side's, this side's done now, look at that, nice and shiny, looking good, no major issues, cleaned up all in here as well, uh, no rough edges, no score marks, still got this edge to do, and this side to do, you can see, it's just dirt and rust. Pads all clean, now it's time for the pad carrier, got to be careful with these because you've got on here a little plastic, no collet, cover grommet that holds the sliders and you don't want to catch them with your wire brush because you'll split them and then you'll get loads of stuff and crud all in here so i'm gonna just uh, give this a wire brush off give the carriers the holders a wire brush off uh, clean that up put the brakes back together that's the pad carrier all cleaned up and uh, ready to go get the pads on get this back on the car get the brakes bled and uh, check the passenger side for issues with the ball joints, arms, etc. Now to put it all back together, I'm just finger tightening the pad carrier, uh, which is on the car now. Got to get the pads in, make sure you copper slip all your nuts and bolts, remember. I've pushed the uh, piston back in the caliper, and the caliper will go back on, and then we will tighten the wheel up, and then that will be job done for the front brakes. 
Wheels all back together, and it's uh, spinning nicely, and it's uh, not binding, not restricting. Actually, sounds lovely. In fact, there's no restriction in that at all, which is grand. Next thing is to test uh, the springs and the bearing and any play in there. I don't think there's any play in there, but we'll soon find out. Got the wheel off again because I forgot to bleed the, blank, bleed the brakes. So I've clamped it off, uh, taken the bleed nipple out, uh, copper slipped it, and now I'm gonna bleed the brakes. Meanwhile, Dad's found quite a big problem. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a swimming pool in the back. Um, so, uh, yeah, the car is massively leaking water in. We've had quite a bit of rain, the car's been outside. Um, yeah, that's quite bad. There's about, uh, well, an inch of water in the back, which is unbelievable. Um, so we need to find out where that's coming in and ultimately how to get it out. That's a bad, big problem. I have sucked all of the water out of the car and put the car back on the deck. Quite worryingly, the amount of uh, water that was in there. Uh, it's been at the front and it's been at the back here. I'm expecting it to be getting in through the roof. Um, but what we're going to do is check the plenum drains. Now, I'm glad Dad uh, told me what that was called because I had no idea, but I'm guessing it's the drains from the windscreen um, and the water coming down this side of the bonnet. So we're going to take this trim off and check those drains. Well, the trim's off. We've got that off. We've got the wipers off. Under here, and it doesn't look too bad. It's a little bit dirty, but it doesn't look massively blocked. I suppose the way to test it is tip some water down and see what happens. Well, it's not the plenum drains that's full, uh, blocked, because we've just tipped loads of water in. It's all, <laughs> all come out. It has... Uh, dislodged a bit of rubbish but nothing that I think is going to be the issue. I've had to postpone uh, the work on the Toyota MR2 to go and pick up the boss, Mrs John Coupland. Uh, ten past four, I've been working on this for about four or five hours now, I am filthy as you can see. Let's go get Mrs John Coupland, bring her home so she's not moaning and then carry on. Well, we've not found the source of the leak yet, but I've just started the car up to uh, give it a run and make sure that the wipers all work properly. Wipers are working fine. Uh, put that all back together. And then we can check the lights, check the seat belts. And apart from that, we are gonna be good to go for our MOT. Right, it's time to check the lights. Uh, it's not something you can do on your own. You need a man. Here's a man who will be able to help me check the lights. We'll start at the front. Make sure when you're checking the lights, you check the brakes with and without the indicators on to make sure there's no bad earth. Make sure. So we'll do the front lights first. And go from there. Side lights, yes. 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 Oh, we've got to check that, haven't we? Side repeaters, yeah. Side repeater. Side repeater. I have noticed something. Someone's put LED bulbs in it. And they look terrible. Yeah. Here. Yeah. <laughs> Huh? Quite. <laughs> yeah, that's lovely. 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 Yeah, fine. Front fogs. Uh, we have. Oh, how do we activate the front fogs? There we go. Front fogs. Yeah, lovely. Lovely. Let's go to the back. Let's go to the back. Go on then. Yep. 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 Lovely. All the lights work. Brilliant. Fog lights. Yep. 
Hazards. Oh, a number plate lights. That's a good one. Yes. Let's check under here. Not yet. Yep. Number plate lights. All good. All good. All the lights are good. I suppose. The, oh, hang on the horn is good as well. Yeah, that's fine. So it's the only other thing we've got to really worry about. These stupid lights that someone has put in. Stupid. Uh, I will show Dad. See what he thinks to that. They are terrible. But you'll like these. Yeah, they're not blue, though, are they? No, but they're stupid, aren't they? What do you reckon? So as you can see, somebody at some point in its life has added these stupid, stupid LED uh, side lights which are a blue, they are terrible, they shouldn't be on the car, they look abysmal, there they are, look Look at them, looking terrible. Um, uh, we're going to have to replace them, aren't we? And the way to do it is by taking all this trim out, there's about a million scrivets to take out. Ugh. But, uh, yeah, that's a job. Right, scrivets are removed, our panel cover is removed uh, dad is removing the last scrivet we're about to see what's under here at least what could be under here who knows i oh, don't tell us we've got to remove that as well no really no <laughs> it just pops out it's just in place we shall soon find out what's under here Uh, there we go, that's out. Yeah, okay. There was definitely more space under there, Toyota, for you to put stuff, I think. I think that's a bad use of space. But as we can see under here now, we can see the brake fluid reservoir, the power steering fluid reservoir, the uh, uh, screen wash reservoir, the relays, the wiper motor, the strut tops. What's, alarm, what's that, an alarm? Oh yeah, there we go, that's the alarm. And we can get to, hopefully, <laughs> the lights now to replace those stupid lights. Right, the old thing is out. The new one is in. What do you think to these, Dad? They're very good. <laughs> That's a lie. You're lying. Are you trying to get a, a sponsor from these uh, LED bulbs? Um, these aren't very good. They're not very well made. They strobe. Uh, they don't match the style of the car i'll tell you exactly where that's going it's going in there well it took about three minutes to install the new non-stupid lights um they are now looking good and uh this is how you install the led lights on a toyota mr2 mark three goodbye and that's it, we are ready for MOT. Brakes all overhauled, everything checked. Uh, the new lights installed, all the lights good. Horn tested, seat belts tested, interior all tested, fueled, uh, tires done, um, exhaust fixed and ready to rumble. So the next video hopefully will be me saying, aha, I have passed my MOT and I am ready for a year's motoring. Or well, someone is going to be ready for a year's motoring. Um, that leak is still something we need to find and deal with. I'm hoping it's because we had absolutely torrential rain the other day that it's just poured in. Um, but long term, it's something that is going to want to be solved. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks to Dad, as ever, for all his hard work. Um, who knows, maybe he will get a uh, sponsorship from Cups of Tea. <laughs> Or Urbauer Tools. Maybe you're looking to sponsor Dad and his uh, workshop ability. Let me know in the comments below. Have a great day. Whatever you're getting up to. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, please do. There's loads of stuff coming to the channel between now and Christmas. If you haven't already liked the video, please do. If you did like the video, of course. If you didn't like the video, then, well, don't like it. Um, and uh, let me know in the comments below. What do you think? Are we uh, MOT ready or have I missed something glaringly obvious? Take care. Thanks for watching. You're all absolute legends as always. Have a great day.
Thank you. Bye bye. Somehow also been roped into helping Dad clean his car. So uh ending the day well. Hello, you absolute legends. Welcome back to the channel on seven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I'm in the Proton Garage because I'm getting my jump pack out. Um, because it's time to MOT the Toyota MR2, the Mark III one, the one that we have been working on. I am absolutely knackered. Uh, you can probably hear from my voice, I've not really woken up yet. I got in from work about five hours ago. <laughs> this was a bad idea. Uh, yeah, I had a late one at work. Um, and I've got this booked in for sort of half seven in the morning. Fingers crossed all is okay. I need to nip round to Dad's to go pick the car up. Um, the car isn't permanently insured, as in I haven't bought an insurance policy for it yet. However, obviously, you, you wouldn't be able to drive it on the road without insurance. So I've just bought a temporary insurance for four hours. It's cost me £18. That's quite steep. Uh, it normally costs me about a tenner. But um, I guess it's the time of day that I'm doing it. School run, midweek. Um... And probably they're thinking, hang on a minute, this guy's randomly insuring loads of cars for a couple of hours. Um, in this video then, we will take the Toyota MR2 for an MOT. We will go to see my friends at King's of Stickney. Hello to them. They'll let me have a look underneath the car. Not that I need to. I've had a look under it all last week. <laughs> it's going to be under trays galore. Um, and fingers crossed, we will be coming home with a pass. Come with me then. Let's go for an MOT. Uh, take this little Toyota MR2. And see how she drives now dad's fixed all the problems because i haven't driven it since uh since i bought it and since dad has done all the work on it so uh hopefully i will notice an improvement on that as well right so i've walked around to dad's with my jump pack it looked like i was carrying a defibrillator i think uh, and dad actually beat me to it i didn't think he was going to be here because quite early in the morning i thought you'd be in the gym have you been to the gym i have been to the gym mate yes. tell me what you did in the gym what did i do i did some bench pressing some deadlifting, some uh dumb, dumb, dumb stuff dumbbell jeff, flies jeff capes um in the last video your viewers won't know who jeff capes is so uh strong person <laughs> Um, so, since the last video, what have you found? Duck pond. Tell, tell me about the leak. The leak? The little vent thing in there, broken in half. There's, so, a, there's a little hammock that catches the water that leaks in, and then it goes down this duct in, in here. So it catches it, what, here? There's a little hammock thing down here. Yeah, and it goes into here and comes, and comes out. out. And anything that doesn't get in there, behind them cubby holes, there's another drain. So if okay. you get water in, it comes out, but that was blocked as well. So basically all the drains were blocked? Yeah, but there's a panel in there that looks like it's a service item because the little scribbit things you can do with your hands. So I'm guessing clean that out is a service item. There we go. Um, so Dan has fixed, fingers crossed, the duck pond issue. Um, I will put uh, in here now the videos that Dad sent me of the leaking issues. Just checking out this water leak, John Boy. And the end of the pipe that comes from the drain sack to the outlet under the wheel arch you can see it it's not stuck together so the water instead of going through that hole being running down in here no wonder it's a blooming mess There's also a belt and braces drain tube that goes through the floor, goes into the sill. It was blocked as well. So as you can see, and in Dad's broadest Lincolnshire, he's described to us what the issues are. Uh, fingers crossed that solved that problem. Right, let's get it hooked up, let's get it out, and let's get it for an MOT. First cup of tea, I think. One of the great features about these MR2s, as you can probably hear, is when you put them in reverse, you sound like you're a lorry reversing. Stand well clear. So I'm about five miles into my journey. There's no major issues so far. Uh, it's quite noisy here and here, which is what I would expect from a ragtop of this age. I'm cruising at around 30. I'm going through a village at the moment. It's nice. 
There's no rattles, there's no knocks, there's no bangs. There is a bit of a creak from the dashboard, which is annoying. I think that's where somebody previously has had the dashboard out to fit some cables, probably for that um, speed rev limiter. But so far, so good. I've had the radio on, it sounds lovely. Oh, Proton Gen 2. That's the one we always see. Very nice. 08 plate, and it's in its usual place. It's looking good. We shall see how we get on. I'm nearly at the MOT centre. So fingers crossed for a full bill of health. We've got to go around this bus. <laughs> Thanks, bus. Um, but the car drives lovely. And actually, in my first experience of a Mark III MR2, it could get away from you if you let it. In fact, it nearly did on a corner. But I didn't let it. Right, let's see how we get on. As you can see, I've pulled the car into the MOT test bay. It is on the ramp, ready to go. Um, you can see that I'm pointing out the aftermarket alloy wheels here. And it sits quite nicely, to be honest with you, for a car on an MOT ramp uh, on those aftermarket wheels. We'll do a quick spin around. There's the MOT tester. Hello, Neil. And he's got his bar there because he's about to do the MOT emissions test and he needs to depress the pedal. Normally, uh, you would have a specific way of doing it. He's His way of doing it is wedging a bar <laughs> against the pedal um, and uh, keeping those revs on. You can see the lights are looking all good, beautiful, and this is uh, getting ready to do the emissions test. I was uh, a bit worried about the emissions test because, obviously, if you have not seen the videos... We've had to do some work to the catalytic converter. We've had to weld it up. There's the car on the ramp. So he's about to put the probe in the exhaust. And uh, we shall see how we get on. Right, the probe is in the exhaust. Let's see how we get on with the emissions test. And this tests the oxygen, the airflow. I'm not uh, an expert, but look at that. 0%. Winner, winner. Very good. Emissions test passed, that's part one. Right, let's send it up on the ramp. There she goes. And uh, what the MOT tester will do now is jack up the wheels so they're, uh, no, it's not on the suspension. He'll test all the suspension, look at the springs, look at the gaiters, look at the bushes. And while he's doing that, I got to have a look at under tray city <laughs> under the car. Um, and you can see just how good it is under here. This number two... Uh, intrigued me on this tank here i quite liked that um and yeah it's mainly plastic under here but the chassis is looking good the rails all looking good um no rot no issues a little bit of surface rust on pipes and bars and bits and pieces but considering the car is 20 years old i am very very surprised at the condition under here and uh, so was the mot tester as well here are the back brakes that we uh, worked on a couple of weeks ago looking fine and uh, here are the front brakes that i did just this weekend gone from an alternative view arms looking good uh, everything really looking good under there gaiters all looking good as well and um, he lent me his torch so we can see underneath now at these sills a little bit of uh, surface rust but no holes and it is really rust that kills these cars so the fact that um, over a 20 year period there's no major chassis rust is uh, a good testament to this car and if you get one that's a good starting point then uh, then it's always going to be good okay so the car is up on the ramp here he's got the front jacked up as you can see and we're coming down now we're going to do the next bit of the test which is to jack the back up all good there no spoilers and then we're on to the rolling road we are going to test or the tester is going to test the brake travel now and um, all good on there uh, he puts it on the rolling road and uh, it applies the brakes and it works out the velocity and the braking and i'm not an expert but it basically tells us if the brakes are any good and this machine does that um for us uh again no spoilers but as you can see uh, everything looks to be in order 139 123 that's on the rear and then the front we are looking at now again no major issues the handbrake is tested as part of this as well things i didn't show you is testing the lights but the light aim very good 
That's it then, I'm returning from the MOT test centre, I've literally just left with a smile on my face because, well, it's a pass, hooray! And not only is it a pass, it's a pass with no advisories, no issues at all. Thanks to the team at Kings of Stickney for fitting me in for an MOT test at such short notice. Um, no issues with the car at all. The MOT tester actually said just how wonderful the car is, and it's definitely one that if he had a collection, he would be keeping. Um, you've saw the process in the video. What's next for the car? Well, who knows? Mrs. John Cooper is a fan of the car. However, she's also a fan of nice holidays, so that might be going to fund a holiday uh, or, or something else in the collection. Um, I've had three people interested in the car already who have messaged me out of the blue to say, John, if you sell the MR2, give me first refusal. But actually, at the moment, I'm toying with the idea of keeping it, putting it away over winter and enjoying it next summer. Who knows? 41,700 miles on the clock, and it does drive absolutely beautiful. Of course, massive thanks to Dad, uh, who has done all the work on the car for me, and you guys as well have suggested a few things if you've enjoyed the video thumbs up please what do you reckon let me know in the comments below oh tatey harvesting welcome to lincolnshire it's all the seagulls have a great day whatever you're getting up to today i'm at work now so uh yeah nine o'clock gotta get to work take care have a good day thanks for watching goodbye Hello, you absolute legends. How are you? Welcome back to the channel. It's John here, and uh, this video is a little bit of a different one for you. It's something I've not done on the channel yet, so if it's naff, well, I will uh, blame Mrs. John Coupland. That's, uh, <laughs> that's my escape. In this video, we're going to be taking my Mark III Toyota MR2 for a bit of a test drive. We're going to drive it with the top on, with the top off. And uh, just check it out. It's, as I say, the first video that I've done for a test drive. So I hope you enjoy the video style. And uh, let me know in the comments below what car you would like to see me test drive next. So, the first part of this road test will become clear in just a moment. And that part is the space. Um, you may fail to notice, but... I'm a big guy, uh, six foot three and 20 year ish stone um, is coming up to Christmas. The MR2 is a two seater, but um, for someone who's a little bit tall, you'll see in a minute, it's difficult to get in and out. You have to squeeze yourself into the car and oh, one leg after the other. And the driving position, for me is as far back as it can be we've got this bulkhead here which is a bit tight and when you've got the roof down there seems to be more space but actually from a driving position you could probably get uncomfortable quite quickly headspace well i'm doing okay i've got some space here between the uh, roof and myself but um so far, not good if you're a fatty, like me. Anyway, let's take the car for a spin. This is the first time I've actually taken it for a proper good spin. So this is a genuine uh, test drive for me. Um, this car is the 1.8 version VVTi, two-seater uh, convertible, six speed. And it's built in 2003, as we discussed earlier. First port of call. Turn the car on. The car has just had a new battery and you can hear it's quite throaty. It's got an aftermarket exhaust. It's not a stainless steel exhaust. It is a uh, aftermarket one. But once you get going and once the revs settle down a little bit, because it is revving high at the moment, at uh, around about 1800 RPM, then um, it, will, uh, it will calm down a bit. I'm not going to rag the arse off it. That's a Lincolnshire phrase uh, in this video. I am going to take it for a spin. We're going to do a few things. We're going to look at handling. We're going to look at the braking. We're going to look at the steering because the steering on this is quite nippy. Um, and then we're going to look at what it's like with the top off. Those revs are slowly coming down 1500. I am just going to let it warm up a little bit more. It is a cold old day. And uh, I'm going to just gently turn the... Uh, 
fans on here is set to warm and it is set to uh, windscreen as well because with me talking in here well it's going to steam up quite quickly while i'm letting it warm up a little bit i'll just show you this cubby hole you've got quite a deep cubby hole in here places to put i don't know your sat nav or your sandwiches um you've also got a double drinks holder there one and two that's nice uh ashtray in there there's some bits and pieces in fact what's that in there is that 20 pence oh no it's a blanking plug good job because else i'd have had that um, and you've got your glove box here obviously as well which has got a few bits and pieces in um this is a road test as opposed to a feature test can you hear that no it's not a truck reversing at my local co-op um <laughs> it's the reverse uh, you have to put it into reverse and you get this wonderful uh, beep, beep, beep noise. I'm not going to reverse it because we're driving straight off. Make sure I've got my lights on because it is a bit of a dull day. I've adjusted my mirrors. They're all good. Let's go for a spin. I've put it in the reverse again by accident. And that is one of the things you can do because you push it across too far and you end up going into reverse. So to find one, it's just across a little bit and down. Car's warming up nicely. We've got a quarter of a tank of petrol, 41,704 miles on the clock, and we're ticking over just at about 1,200 RPM. Let's go for a spin. Now, the car's been stood for a couple of weeks because uh, it's been advertised for sale, and actually it's been pretty naff weather out and about. So we're gonna take it for a spin around the Lincolnshire countryside, but one of the first things you're probably gonna hear is those brakes clearing themselves off. That is mud on the road. Oh look, it's a mini inspector. <laughs> we'll go for a ride around the Lincolnshire countryside and you can see I'm, I'm semi-comfortable. My knees are touching the steering wheel. 30 miles an hour through the village, comfortable into fourth. It's not noisy. There's no knocks, there's no bangs. We're coming up to the 60, we're in fourth. We will open that up gently. We're doing 50 miles an hour. And I've got a heavy brake, heavy brake, heavy brake, heavy brake. And the reason for that is just to clear those brakes off because the last thing I want to be doing is ditching it on this road test. We'll do a couple more of those. Heavy brake, heavy brake, heavy brake, heavy brake, heavy brake. Now I'm doing that safely. There's nobody else on the road around me. We are on Lincolnshire's finest back roads. I know these back roads like the back of my hand. We're coming into the 30 mile an hour zone again, which is, you know, I don't know, town and city driving. I'm sat at 30 comfortably, 2000 RPM, and I'm in third gear. The car will tell you when it wants to change up. You get <laughs> not only the red line, uh, but that throaty, throaty noise which I'll replicate when I get out of the village, obviously, onto Lincolnshire's finest back road. So far, steering, well, I've not done much steering recently, really, to be honest with you, uh, but the steering feels good. The driving position, I feel a little bit upright. I can actually already feel a little bit of uh, tension in the bottom of my back, but no knocks, no rattles, no bangs, and from a convertible that's 20 years old I'm quite impressed with that okay we're about to come out of the village you can hear that exhaust you can hear the repair to be honest with you that dad and I has done suspension is good and that little 1.8 litre engine VVTI is just whirring away nicely we're still not up to temperature we're about a third of the temperature there. We've been driving for, what, five minutes now. We've slowed down because it's a Saturday and uh, everyone's at the church. This is the church that Mrs. John Cooper and I got married nearly a year ago today. What a terrible financial decision she made. <laughs> Whoa! Nearly front-ended old woman in a Suzuki Swift. Right, okay. Here we go. Into second. Into third. Into fourth, 
and brake, 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 corner, 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 corner. Handles a dream, it really does, especially on that line. I know these back roads, like I said, it's gripping, gripping around these Lincolnshire back roads. I'm not driving like a Wally, I'm doing 35, but it's ever so fun. Now, things I'm going to obviously watch out for are hazards. Hazards being mud, wet, leaves, and other road users. We'll take it up to speed. You can hear the noise now from that engine. And that's it, 60 miles an hour. We're in fifth gear. I don't need to be in sixth yet. In fact, I'm not in sixth yet. It's not comfy, don't get me wrong. It's not something you're gonna take your nan out for Sunday lunch in. But it's fun. <laughs> brake, 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 brake. Those brakes are so responsive. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the joys of Lincolnshire. We've got a flood in the road. I'm not going through that. I'm genuinely not going through it. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but that is relatively deep. Uh, I'm going to go this way. <laughs> and we'll go through it that way. I am not going to go through that, however fun that would have been. Because that could cause some issues. Especially with how low the car is. There's lots of plastic under trays. But the last thing I want is water in electrics. Water in places I don't want water to be. What I'm going to do is pull over and take the roof off. And we'll go for a drive with the roof down. There's a few creeks here and there. Those creeks are mainly from the dash. Um, I'm impressed. But I've not got into sixth yet. We'll open her up on the main road in just a minute. Mrs. John Coopland, who is our camera woman today, by the way. Hello. Um, she's showing off her nails. Um, we'll take the... Uh, take the hood off she can show you it in no 4d to take the hood off it's a bit of a faff you've got to fold down your uh, visors on both sides and there are uh, is a button here it's a bit like an mgtf if you've ever had an mgtf you push the button you push it down and that retracts same the other side push it down pull and that retracts Make sure that that's fully retracted because if it's not, you're going to get stuck and you're going to scratch all this up. And you've got a handle. And away you go. He says, they made that look easy. Um, it's a bit stiff. To a point where I might actually have to get out and do it. See, it's not as easy as doing it whilst you're in the car. I am going to have to get out the car and faff about with it. And now you'll see me graciously roll out. And to get out when the roof is down, fine, not a problem. When the roof's up, I'm going to have to really lean on this sill. Oh, that wasn't a great view. I can see the issue, it's not retracting. due to it being a bit tight. And you could end up damaging your soft top quite easily. It clips into place here, and you've got a visor here. Now, that visor, you can't put it up when your seats are right back. Which is a bit crap. I've never known our local village so busy. Now to get in when you've got the roof off, you can just slide yourself in. Clunk, click every trip. 
Well, see the difference now, and you'll see the difference. Now I've got the roof off. <laughs> and I'm struggling to get my seatbelt on, and my camera person isn't showing you that. I'm going to turn around, we're going to look at the turning circle. I'm on a standard double size road, you can see the church in the background. Let's spin it round and see if we can do it in one. No. <laughs> so I'm going to have to put it into van mode and reverse it. And then go from there. Stop sign. There's the local pub. So I'm six foot three. There's no rollover bars on this car. So if I was to turn it over in any way, I'd be in a bit of trouble. But now the top's off, <laughs> you can see what it's gonna to do to my hair. What's my view like? Well, it's okay. What's the buffeting like? It's quite buffety. Do I think that small three inch acrylic visor will do much? No. But it's about having the wind in your hair on a summer's day and not on a winter's afternoon in Lincolnshire. The driving is better with the top off. I'm not gonna go through the puddle. In fact, I'm gonna continue on this way. But driving is better with the top off. We're blowing, literally, blowing the cobwebs away. Comfortably sitting at 50 miles an hour on a Lincolnshire back road. We're into 60. And the handling is astronomical. It's like a road legal go-kart. bringing a smile to my face. It's so good. It is great. It's not about being fast. It's not about commuting in it. It's about having the top off and enjoying the afternoon. And actually, I'm not cold. The pain in my back has gone. I can forgive the driving position. I can forgive the lack of being able to put my golf clubs in it. Because it's a driver's car. I've driven MX-5s. I've driven Audi TTs. <laughs> and this is just bonkers. But I don't want to because that's boring, isn't it? I'm enjoying throwing this through the wet, through the rain. <laughs> and through the mud. I should probably clean it afterwards. But it's so much fun. And hopefully you can hear that it's not that noisy, really, in comparison to, I don't know, an MX-5? It seems, oh, 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 oh. I have slowed down for this one. Oh, it's like being at the theme park. 
I've just got soaked. That's great fun. I don't know if you caught that, but if I'd done that at 50, it would have been like being on Valhalla at Blackpool Pleasure Beach after the refurbishment. Sod the road test, I'm having too much fun! Also, as is tradition, sheep! <laughs> I want to show you the view from up top. Take her up top. Woo! <laughs> Don't take her up top. You can see how much, how windy that is, and how much that really throws the wind up. We nearly lost the filming equipment. We'll come to the main road. And we'll throw it down the A52. I'm in fifth. It doesn't sound like a tractor. It doesn't whir. Don't get me wrong. Oh, I've gone the wrong way. I need to turn round. Da 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 da. Turning round is relatively easy though. Off we go. Quick pit stop. And away we go. Isn't it unbelievable that the speed limit on these roads is 60 miles an hour? <laughs> It's handling so nicely. We're coming into the village. So I'll slow it down. That heater, by the way, I've got it set to halfway and it's on low. And I'm not cold, I'm in my heaps good hoodie. Shout out to everybody in South Australia. But I'm not cold. We'll take it out onto the main road because we're back where we started. There's the pub. That's where we put the top down. Ah, oh, that's ambiently beautiful. There it is. There's our local village church. We'll head on out to the main road, which is the A52 speed limit there, 60 miles an hour. Most of it, however, now 50 miles an hour. Average speed cameras on the way to Skegness. You don't need to go fast to enjoy it. In fact, like I said earlier, I'd be happy pootling this to Skegness at 30 and just enjoying the day. If I got stuck behind a tractor on the A52, I could comfortably overtake it. But I don't need to. And it drives beautifully at low speed and high speed. I really love this car. It was probably one of the best buys of 2023. Would I let Mrs. John Cooperman drive it? Yeah, yeah I would. And I don't mean that in a sexist, misogynistic way, but all she's ever driven in her life is a Peugeot 207 Sport and a Fiat 500. And the Audi TT 225 is a little bit ferocious. This wouldn't get away with her, I don't think. Main road, 
average speed camera now. Make sure I don't get caught by that because that would be a bad time. And then we will open it up and that'll be the end of the road test. I want to thank Dad for all his hard work on this one because when I bought it, not only was the car sounding like a tractor, if you can remember, but it had no MOT, the brakes were binding, and it had been stood for a good 18 months. I'm waiting for the 60 because we're in a 50. I'm cruising along on the A52, the top down on my Toyota MR2. Apart from wind, it's not noisy. I could quite happily go and do my weekly shop. There's some space in the front. There's some space in the back. back. I love this car. I really do. It's an underrated little machine, the MR2. I have a Mark 1, which is also on the channel. I've never driven a Mark 2, but from what I hear, these are a highly recommended in the MR2 community, and I now see why. This is genuinely probably the first time I've given it a good old drive. And I understand why people recommend them. They're cheap, they're affordable, they're built well, they handle well. They're not gonna get away from you. Do it. Buy yourself a Toyota MRT. Find a low miler. Spend three or four grand on one. And just enjoy it. That's it. That's the end of the test drive. I hope you've enjoyed the video. It's got its nuances, the fact that it's not an electric hood lets it down. The fact that I had to get out the car to uh, put the hood down was an issue, in my opinion. The lack of actual space, you couldn't take it away for a week. You'd be washing your pants every day. But it's one of them things that for a few thousand pounds, what can you buy nowadays? Find a good one and enjoy it. I'm impressed, genuinely, by this little Toyota MR2. And I hope you've enjoyed this road test. I'm going to park it up now. And I should probably, probably wash it. <laughs> if you've enjoyed the video, Thumbs up, please. Thumbs up. Thumbs up from Mr. John Cooten too. If you've not subscribed, please do. And if you want to see more on the channel of me taking some cars out for a Raz, let me know in the comments below. Have a great day. Whatever you're getting up to, take care. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Mrs. John Cooten is just inspecting how filthy it is. <laughs> You probably can't see that on the video. But we've got her dirty. Very, very dirty. Hello, you absolute legends. Welcome back to the channel. It's John here on what well, is a beautiful, sunshiny, autumnal Lincolnshire morning. Uh, in this video, we are going to get the Toyota MR2, which is over there, ready for sale. Um, yeah, it's uh, the sort of thing 
that sadly I'm having to offer up for sale. Uh, let's go through the uh, through the Stargate this morning. If you haven't seen the video of us building this, by the way, it's on the channel. Um, but yeah, the Toyo Dramar 2 is part of the collection. It's part of the cars that are just parked up here doing nothing. Um, and I've made the decision that it has to go. I advertised it recently on uh, Car and Classic and uh, it's got a bit of attention. But there's a few things that we need to look at before we get it ready for sale before we take the photographs and offer it up for sale. It's been sat here on the grass for a couple of weeks, which again is not ideal. Um, it needs a new battery, so that's something we need to do. And it needs a good old scrub and just to make sure that everything is okay. Um, Dad's on the way around, he's gonna give us a hand today. He's gonna fit the new battery with us. He's gonna make sure that the car is okay. But in this video, we are going to uh, get the car out we're going to get it round the front and we are going to um, make sure that everything is all okay, take some pictures and offer it up for sale and hopefully, just hopefully, it will find itself a nice new home. Um, the grass is quite long here because it's been so wet I've not had a chance to cut it. Um, and it's quite early, it's 7 o'clock in the morning here. You can see the sun is just, oh, just coming up there, beautiful. Uh, first thing to do is to get the um, gates open. Many people ask me, John, how do you get your cars round from the front to the back? Well, it's via this access gate, so I will get the gates open and then we will get the car started up and round. For those of you who are interested in gates, uh, there's a drop bolt here that goes into my floor just to stop these gates from pinging open if I'm uh, driving round. Same again this side, there's a tube in the floor uh, where the drop bolts can go in, such as this which stops them from uh, smashing back and potentially hitting one of my cars uh, if I'm driving past. As you can see, this area here is sort of old concrete. When I moved into the house, this was all trees and bushes and stuff like that. Uh, I've just grassed over it and put the gates up. Um, one of the jobs for next year is this concrete line here, I'm gonna take all the way across to there and there and there and there and just concrete hard stun this area because it gets really difficult to get in and out of and also don't tell mrs john Cooper, but it gives me more hard standing here and here <laughs> to potentially put some uh, put some cars on right let's get the car started let's go this way you can have a peek in the uh, in the proton garage this morning da -da 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 -da. let's give that a shot Goodbye. That's organised chaos. We, we, we won't worry about that. Right, Proton Garage time. What are we looking for? We're looking for my jump pack. Uh, where is my jump pack? Hmm. Oh, I know where I've left it. It's in the Audi TT. Let's go get that. Uh, let's go move the smart car. Because the smart car's on the grass as well. Let's go do that. <laughs> Traipsing back. We'll move the smart car. We'll get the jump pack. And we will get the car moved. Locked myself out of the house. So I had to get Mrs. John Coopland to pass a key through the window. Got the smart car keys. Let's move the smart car. Um, you can see me do this. And uh, we'll pop it just there behind the snail van. Dad's on the way, as I say. Oh my goodness, don't look in there. Look how dirty that is. Ugh. In we get. Hello. The smart car, by the way, if you've never seen inside one, uh, apart from pork pies, don't look at that. Uh, the keyhole is here. <laughs> there we go. Turn that off. Uh, let's get that sorted. Them done. Let's move the car. Well, it's been sat on the grass for a day or two. There she goes. And you can just tell how wet that grass is by how um, how much it sank in there. We'll have a look at that in a second. Oh, right, let's go into there. And we'll just pop the smart car behind the snail van. Move a little bit further forward, see where we're going. Yep, yeah, good. Right, smart car's moved. 
Mrs. John Coopland calls this scrapyard Tetris. And I understand why it's frustrating. Sometimes we have to move cars about to get others out, but, well, this is a special occasion, isn't it? Right, so that's the current situation on the driveway. Uh, Mrs. John Coopland wants to go to work today. I will take her to work in the smart car. Need to get the MR2 round. Mm, where shall I put it? Here, maybe, probably the right place to put it. Let's just have a look at uh, the grass here. Uh, it's not caused too much of an issue. Fine, okay. Right, smart car is moved. Now to get the jump pack out, which I think <laughs> is in the TT, stand by. See, it's never a five minute job, is it? Oh, well, the, the Audi TT has opened itself, so that's a good thing. Aha, there it is. Now you might think, John, why is there a jump pack in your Audi TT? And, you, well, you know why there is. Uh, the battery is no good. Um, I haven't got a new one yet. It's on my list of things to buy. Um, Tania batteries, by the way, are the battery company that I use. They're about 50 quid for a battery delivered. Not necessarily the best, but do the job. Right, I have my jump pack. Let's go move the uh, MR2. Okay, fine. Do you like these, by the way? These are, uh, I don't know what they're called, flamingo trees, I think, something like that. Salix Integra, Hakuro Nishiki. Um, Mrs. John Cooper was gifted those by my parents for her birthday. Um, they're gonna go somewhere in our Japanese-inspired garden. Um, thought you might like those. Maybe you don't. Um, okay. MR2, let's get into here. It should be unlocked. I've got the keys. If you haven't seen the drama with regards to me losing keys recently, um, I suggest you uh, check that out on the channel because that was, well, less than ideal, shall we say. Let's have a look inside. Uh, the reason the seat's pulled so far forward is to make sure it's nice and dry, and it still is. And there's no damp or mould or anything in there, but I'm gonna give all this a clean uh, anyway prior to the sale. Let's pop the bonnet, or the boot, shall we say, um, and get her jumped off. Dee, 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 dee. There it is. There is the battery we're going to be replacing and jumping off. Um, but we will uh, get it started up. This is probably going to be very difficult to do one-handed, so I can only apologise in advance. I'm going to stand the jump pack on the sort of the cross member bit here. Uh, black on black, red on red. Now, when I've previously tried to jump this car off, it's not worked, and the reason being here is a little plastic uh, bit that the uh, leads sit into. So if you don't get it on the nut, or the actual metal, obviously, it doesn't start up. So, uh, in theory now, we should be in a position to turn the key, which I have got, and uh, start her up. Here we go. Well, that's always a good sign. I'm gonna make sure, obviously, that it's out of gear. Start up. And I'm just gonna let it run for a while. I'm gonna take that battery pack off. You can hear that it's uh, cold. I've probably done that wrong, by the way. I'm gonna have battery pack people shouting at me. Should take the red off first, should take the black off first. I know, I know, I know. Put that down there. And so far, everything sounds good. You can see we've got steam. <laughs> we've got exhaust fumes. If you haven't seen the video, remember Dad and I repaired the manifold there. I'm going to take this out, drop it down, and uh, get the car backed up and sort of around the front. What a beautiful day. While the car's warming up, we're going to take a look at the brakes. You can see that we, when we cleaned the brake discs and pads, They've become rusty again due to lack of use. That's not a major issue. Blast the car off down the road and it'll be fine. 
same again here, it might be stuck on a little bit, but um, just wait for it to turn on, demist, and uh, warm up a little bit. Then we'll give it a drive. I might even take the top off. Should we take the top off to drive it round? Hmm, probably not. I've got the blowers on, I've got the wipers on. Uh, everything's on full there. Let's get the heated rear screen on, that should clear that off. And um, just wait for it to demist a little bit. The last thing I want to do is hit the house or hit the car, trying to get it out in a rush. Whilst waiting for the MR2 to warm up, let's take a look at this Proton, uh, which is it's one that is going to be broken for spares. Um, it's not one that I'm going to be repairing. Let's see how much it's deteriorating. It's been sat here a good couple of months now. Ah, yes. It's not faring too well, sadly. Uh, well, I thought the sunroof leaked, but... <laughs> well, there isn't a sunroof. Um, Mrs John Coopman doesn't know this yet, but uh, this car is probably going to feature in our Christmas display this year. <laughs> Has anyone ever put Christmas lights on a Proton? Probably not, but they're about to. Don't know what you think to that, but that's something that's coming up. It's quite a cold morning here in Lynx. Uh, the blowers are doing their job, as you can see. I'm going to wait for it, uh, I don't know, two or three minutes more, um, and uh, then we'll get it moved. Talking about that, look who's arrived. It's only Dad. He's got some tools. He's going to help us. He's got the new battery, so that will be fitted in just a minute's time. Dad's here in the uh, 406, bonus 406 content as well today. He's brought some tools with him. What you got there? Aha, it's the new battery. Um, it cost 30, oh. <laughs> it was about 45 quid with postage. Uh, it's from Tanya or Tanya, I don't know how to say it. Um, you basically type in your number plate on their website and they tell you what battery you need and then you can scroll through and get uh, the cheapest one. <laughs> it shouldn't be difficult to fit. Fitting the battery is not the video. Uh, because it is, you know, taking the battery carrier off and taking the leads off, putting the new battery in, and away you go. Um, but that is, but this is part of getting the car ready for sale. And the reason Dad's helping me is because, well, he's getting a slice of the pie, so to speak. Because <laughs> I've got to pay Dad for all his efforts. Whilst Dad's doing that, let's go check on the car, make sure it's uh, warmed up now. The inspector, by the way, for those of you who want to know where the MR2 inspector is, well, she's fast asleep. I've just been and checked on it. Aha! The car is looking warmed up. So no inspector this morning. Maybe she'll appear later in the video. Who knows? I'm going to just check my fish pond as well whilst we're uh, down this end of the garden. This is normally Mrs John Cooton's domain. Well, everyone's looking happy. I need to take some of these weeds out. Um, good, let's get in the car. <laughs> let's get the car round the front. I'm going to squeeze myself in. Blimey, it's warm in there. Let's get in. Ooh. And you know what? This is one of the reasons I'm selling the car. Ooh. Because, technically, I'm far too big to fit in here. Uh, yeah, I'm far too big to fit in this car. And enjoy it comfortably. Let's turn that off. Let's turn that down a little bit now, because that is nice and clear. Uh, let's pop the windows down. Where's the window winders? Here they are. Ta -ding! And the same again this side. There they go. Now I can see what I'm doing. Let's put the pedal in. The reverse, by the way, on these is all the way over and up. And you hear that horrible beeping like you're a blooming truck. Oh, that's not a good start. Hey! Oh dear. Now we're moving. Now we're cooking with gas. Oh dear. <laughs> you can see the mess I've left. Right, let's get the car turned around. Uh, I obviously couldn't film the process of me getting the car around the front because, well, <laughs> I wanted to concentrate. Um, I've got the car on the front, it's within 
the uh, the collection. What do we got? This is an interesting collection, isn't it? We've got a Fiat 500, we've got an Audi TT, we've got a Proton, a Doblo van, a smart car, and out there we've got a uh, Peugeot 406 Estate. I'm going to turn the engine off now. We're going to fit the new battery. Um, I don't believe there's a radio code issue. Uh, I'm confident there's not a radio code issue. If there is, then well, that's my issue. Uh, and then we're going to get that new battery fitted. Let's get out the car. This is so difficult for, for me. <laughs> it's really difficult uh, for me to get out of this car, which is one of the reasons that it's got to go. See, I'm so low down to the ground, it's unbelievable. And I've got to push up off the sill <laughs> and basically roll myself out. Oh, there's the car, right, let's get the boot open. It's ready to rumble. Right, new battery is really simple. It is really, really simple. It's a 10 mil, uh, 10 mil flange nut on this spike. This uh, bracket comes out of here then obviously it's 10 mil, 10 mil, um, and away you go. Dad's uh, hard at work. Good morning. Nearly new lot. Battery is off. What have you got to say to the folks about this MR2? It's a good car. Are you saddened that I'm putting it up for sale? I should have got rid of that old purple Audi. Well, that might be going as well. But more on that story later, when Dad finds out we've bought a Proton Satria GTI. <laughs> of course not. All right, battery is out. New battery to go in. This is the carrier, by the way. It's quite respectable and tidy under there. Um, it's not a big job, this. <laughs> but it's part of the uh, of getting it ready for sale. New battery is fitted. There it is. Job's done. Took me, what, five minutes, of course. This, this, and this. Now to start it up, make sure everything's okay, make sure it starts up first time. I'm, I don't see there being an issue, but stranger things have happened. Got the key. Let's uh, test the central locking first and foremost. So, unlock, yes. Lock, and then deadlock, yes. So as far as I'm aware, the locking is okay. No alarms going off yet, so that's always a good start. Keys in and we're getting a bing bong. Make sure it's out of gear, of course. Turn that. And away we go. Hooray! Good. <laughs> new battery fitted, so new owner is getting a brand new battery. Excellent. Let's make sure that the radio works. Yep, the radio is on. Boing! That's ponged up. Uh, Things tuning, I suppose. How do I scan? Uh, scan? Anyone? Oh, yeah, here we go. Oh, that's nice. Yep, lovely. Right. That Katie Lang. <laughs> uh, right, turn that off. And right, I'm going to turn the radio off so it doesn't ping the. Uh, the aerial every time I turn the car on. Right, now, that's it. Battery fitted. Now to give the car a good once over, make sure it's nice and safe, get it cleaned, take some pictures. Things we're making sure are okay. Obviously, the engine oil levels and the coolant levels. The coolant is a little bit low, uh, which is here. So I'm going to top that up. Um, I've got some G12, which is what that needs. Never open hot. Yeah, never open hot. So I'm going to let that cool down a little bit. Engine is quite warm still. Down to checking the oil. We'll check the brakes. As I say, they're not too bad, but they could do with um, a blast off. Once you get that on the road, no issues at all. I'm going to clean the lights as well, just with a uh, bit of plastic polish and then give the car a good old clean. Now, I will be supplying the car with a set of original alloy wheels, because if you haven't noticed, look at how filthy this is, by the way. Um, if you haven't noticed, it's got aftermarket horrible speed line wheels on, or some nonsense. Um, what I'm gonna do, the sad reality is, I can't be putting the, the wheels on the car because I haven't got tires, 
but you can't also get these boxes in the car so i'm gonna to have to ship them uh, separately to the new owner um so i'm going to just measure the dynamics and measure there they are by the way uh measure the size of the box and work out shipping because that might be a factor for some people who wants to buy the car but um car is going to be supplied with a full set of nearly brand new um toyota mr2 alloy wheels they're all measured up ready to go i estimate it's going to cost about 20 quid to post them they're 36 kilograms in total and uh they are about 50 centimetres by 50 centimetres by 25 centimetres. Get that locked up, and that's good. I'm going to clean that later today, I've decided. That's the job for today, uh, is to clean that door. Uh, right, let's get some coolant now. This garage door, by the way, uh, much more cleaner, because me and Mrs John Cooper did it earlier in the year. Oh, look at this. Uh, actually, it would have been cool to get the two of them together, wouldn't it? The Mark Three and the Mark I. Uh, Sadly, not going to happen. Uh, right, here's my coolant. Here's my... That's an oil funnel. That's an oil funnel. I need a coolant funnel. Going to jug. Uh, we don't need too much, but uh, we do need some coolant in the car. Ta-da! Yeah, you can just see the Mark One <laughs> versus the Mark Three. You may or may not be able to see, but the coolant bottle has been filled up. Um... Oh yeah, hang on a minute, Dad's done something special with the battery terminals. Tell me what you've done. Some petroleum jelly on the battery terminals. Why have you done that? Stop some corona. Good job. Uh, there's a Pete Coopman top tip. There you go, battery. Oh yes, now I see. Petroleum jelly stops it from corroding. Good. There's a use for it. Uh, what else we've got to do? We've got to check the lights, we've got to check the washer bottle. We've got to top that up. Um, and then it's my job, which is giving it a clean. Um, Lights, levels, and tyre pressures. Yeah, tire, well, tyre pressures are okay, but we'll double check those. Um, yeah, good. Right, time to uh, check the screen wash, brake fluid, reservoir. It's, it's a little bit low, actually. Um, I've got some dot four to put in there, we can sort that out. Screen wash. Oh, yes, I remember. It's got one of these weird screen wash dipstick indicator things indicates if you're a dipstick right I've got some distilled water uh, there's already screen wash in there so uh, I'm not gonna put any screen wash in but uh, here we go steady hands look at that now the screen wash is as full as ever <laughs> as full as a full thing it's as full as necessary it's too full actually we'll squirt some of that out but the screen wash is up to date uh we topped it up when we did the car to be honest with you um yeah yeah we did change the brake fluid yeah um there's not really much else to do apart from the lights and what else can you think of oh tire pressures tire pressure just had my air compressor on so that's uh, next I'm about to top the tyres up, it's 26 on the front, 33 on the back. Dad is going around with a torque wrench just to make sure that all the wheel nuts are uh, torqued because we have had the wheels off. We've had all those wheels off in our ownership. Um, just another check that we're doing. Uh-oh, we're in trouble now. The inspector is here. Crystal, hello, good morning. Nice of you to join us, how are you? Uh, Grandad's here, go find Grandad. Go find Grandad. Go find him then. Lost, am I? <laughs> lost, lost, ah, the granddad inspector. No, I'm not lost, am I? I'm not really lost, am I? <laughs> Crystal, uh, the inspector does love her granddad, don't you? That's because granddad has treats. <laughs> uh, tire pressures are all topped up. Um, just a wash now. And all of a sudden, <laughs> everything changed. Um, I've given the car a wash. Not that it's going to do any good, <laughs> looking at today's weather. Um, but the car has been washed, it's been hoovered inside and out, and it's now ready to go. I'll be um, sad to see that little one go. I'm going to retreat back in the house because it's horrible out. Um, yeah, 
Car is now then all ready for sale. I'm going to wash it again <laughs> um, and take some photographs when the weather is a little bit nicer. Um, Price-wise, I'm considering 4995 Reasoning behind that is the quality, the condition, and the low mileage, and the fact that it's got the uh, original wheels with it as well. I'm going to brave this weather, actually. Let me know in the comments below. What's that? 4995 accept four and a half? I think that's a fair price. I just wouldn't use it. New battery on their car now. Ready for a new home. If you see it on Car and Classic, <laughs> give me a call if you fancy it. Um, I'm going to get myself a cup of coffee. Oh my goodness, the uh, washing is still in the sink. But a cup of coffee time now. Uh, we've got the back sorted out as well. I've got all the uh, all the lawns cut. Job's good. One. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, whatever you're doing. I'm probably going to regret the sale of this, but it needs to go, doesn't it? Maybe it can go to you. <laughs> Take care. Thanks. If you have already subscribed, you are all legends. If you haven't already done so, please do. Ring the bell. See you later. I'm going to retreat. Hello, you absolute legends. Welcome back to the channel. It's John here with a bit of an update video for you on the Toyota MR2. The video you're watching, I'm giving you a little bit of a walk around. This is the last time that I will be doing this. The last time I'll be walking around the car, having a look at it, because, well, it's sold. And that is what this little update video is here to talk to you about. Um, I've decided to sell the car. I say I've decided to sell it. It has sold. I'm recording this narration about 10 minutes after it has left my, uh, my grasp. So uh, you can hear I'm a little bit deflated because it was one that I didn't really want to sell. But um, for reasons that I'll discuss in this video, it, it really had to go. If you haven't seen the video on the channel, by the way, a few months ago, maybe four or five months now, I bought this, which is a 2003 Toyota MR2. It's the 1.8 VVTi version. It's the facelift edition, meaning that you got a six-speed gearbox. And if you haven't seen those videos, on the channel then I suggest you check them out they'll be um, in a card or in a playlist for you to watch um, belongs to a friend of mine who sadly uh, passed away uh, I say a friend I shouldn't really say friend uh, he belonged he belonged to a school uh, mate of mine who um, passed away we lost contact uh, after school uh, more of an acquaintance let's use the word acquaintance I think that's more um, fitting who sadly passed away um, a couple of years ago and his widow got in contact with me um, via Facebook and I uh, purchased the car um, totally open and honest with what I do and my YouTube channel X Y and Z um, and my car collection and I got it home and dad and I did some work on the car because it needed bringing back to uh, being reconditioned to the road it'd been off the road a couple of years anyway um, long story short we did that uh, but the car just wasn't really for me um, I'm a big guy, you know, six foot four, twenty odd stone, and it is quite a tight fit in that cabin, um, and it wasn't something that I was able to drive comfortably. Had a long, hard conversation with Mrs. John Cooplin. We also needed to release the funds back out of the car for other projects. More on that coming soon on the channel, um, and so we decided that it would be best to put the car for sale. Also, I didn't have any storage under cover for it at this time i've got too many protons and micros and all sorts of things uh, in garages and so there was nothing uh, nowhere that i could keep it safe so i decided that it needed to go to a good home uh, put it up on for sale on car and classic uh, for four thousand four hundred ninety five pounds and i was contacted by a chap called robert from northern ireland and if you know the northern ireland car market um, stuff like this over there will be a lot more money um, had a good old chat with Robert, sent him lots of photographs, sent him videos, showed him the videos on the channel as well, and he decided to um, come all the way from Northern Ireland and pick the car up, which he has literally just done. The car has just driven away. He is chuffed to bits with the car, um, and we managed to go on a little test run, and he, he's genuinely really happy with the car. It's something he's always fancied, 
So I'm really glad that it's going to a good home. Um, I must admit, I was offered quite a lot of money over the asking price by dealers who wanted to come and buy the car um, after I'd already agreed a price with Robert. Um, they wanted to buy the car. They offered me uh, more than a lot more than the asking price to buy it. Some of them said we would sell the car for eight thousand pounds. I said, well, it's, n it's not about the selling of the car to a dealer and, and profit for me. It's about um, it going to a good home, which I'm hoping that it has done with Robert. The fact that Robert's previous car that he's owned and loved, very similar to the MR2 he's had for 20 years, I'm confident that it's going to a good home and has gone to a good home. So uh, fingers crossed he will keep me up to date with um, bits and pieces about the car. He's going to put it back to OEM standard. You will fail to notice in this video that it has aftermarket wheels on. Um, I have supplied the car with the original wheels, so he will be able to put them back on there. And uh, I, I'm hoping that it gets him home nice and safe. Um, so yeah, that's that's an update on the Toyota MR2. It's gone. It's sold. My reasons behind it um, mainly is that it needed to go to a loving home. Not that I wasn't a loving home for it, but it would just deteriorate sat outside of my garage. And I wouldn't really drive it that much because of the driving position and um, how comfortable it would be. And obviously I've got lots of other different things in the collection on the channel that I would prioritize over this if we were to go to car shows as well, such as my Mark I MR2, such as my Armstrong Sidley, and of course Protons as well. Um, but yeah, that's an update on the car. You can see me struggling here in the video, trying to put the roof down. Um, it's one of them things that it has a bit of a knack and you can't really do it without forcing it a little bit so uh yeah i'm trying to do it without without breaking it. you can see it's creasing there um but yeah that's an update on the toyota mr2 i hope you've enjoyed the video what do you reckon am i a wally to have sold it it was a blooming good car or have i done the right thing for the car in the long run whatever you're getting up to take care thanks for watching if you haven't already liked and subscribed to the channel then uh, please i would love you to it really does help what we're doing and me and Mrs. John Cooper, there's loads of stuff coming next year. And uh, hopefully with some new equipment that I've purchased, new microphones, new gimbals, new cameras, the content coming to the channel will be um, a lot better and a lot better quality for you guys. As always, have a great day, whatever you're getting up to. Take care. Thanks for watching. Goodbye, little Toyota MR2. Goodbye. If you've enjoyed this video, I've selected a few more specially for you on this page. Click either side to select them now. And if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button to always stay up to date with the channel.